to Vegas? I just went to Vegas this past weekend. Okay. I don't, I haven't been to Vegas in like 15 fucking years, but they used to have this thing at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino on Sundays called Rehab at the Pool. (laughs) Stop it. And essentially, and essentially it's like a nightclub at a pool during the day where people are like coming down off of their E or their Molly or they're or they're still like doing coke or whatever. That no. that is what I booked. And then I just was like, oh fuck. <laughs> Listen, should we start yeah, let's the podcast? Get, let's get started. Okay, I'm recording. All right, okay. great. Wait, Biz, is your window open? No, it's my fan. I'll turn it off. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. Do if you, you know needed, how fucking hot it is in New York, Casey? If you need it to I'm survive. To, no, but you know what I do need to survive is a computer charger because... You know, it's going to make keep... a worse noise than your fan is you falling on the floor if you pass out. <laughs> I'm not going to pass out. Wait, I'm just going to ask Ray, will you bring me a charger, please? I feel like we need to get you like a bulk box of chargers. Shut the fuck house. up, Casey. <laughs> I have done it myself. They disappear. People, I don't know who's fucking sneaking in in the middle of the night. And stealing my goddamn chargers and the bricks. The bricks <laughs> yeah. are the hot commodity. Because I have cords for as far as the eye can see. Oh my God. I have cords that would stretch all the way from here back to Los Angeles, but I am lacking the brick. And then if you don't have the brick, you're fucked. Yeah, you can't. Right, let me turn the fan off. I'm going to get a charger. Okay. That was all recorded, so feel free. Yeah. To there you go. There you go. I've never- when I worked at this one place, somebody, it was like an open plan office. Like, you know, at one point, everyone decided like open plan is the way to go. Sure, sure. And someone took my computer cord and like, I there's no way to prove it, but it had like a distinctive scratch yeah. on it. And like, I was like, hey, I think, and I tried to be like passive aggressive about it. Like, hey, I think that might be my computer cord that you accidentally took. And like the person was like, no, it's definitely mine. And I was like, pretty sure it's mine. And like, I don't, they were not having it. They were not giving it back. And then somebody was like, fucking give her back her computer cord. <laughs> <laughs> and like the person was like so salty about it and gave it back. And so like I put all this identifying markers on it and then that person got a computer cord and then when it was unattended I took it. Proud and of you. like Proud of Yeah, you. and ju- and then they were like has anyone seen it? And I was like nope. It was at home. <laughs> yeah. And I just was like and then they got another one and I was like should I continue just taking this person's cord every time? Just to fuck with just- them. <laughs> Yeah, but I only just took it the one time, but I never gave it back. I was just like, when I left that job, I was like, here's that cord I took and never gave back. Because here's the thing is like, even if it happened on mistake, you could be like, oh, is it? I didn't know. But for people to confidently be like, no, when they know damn well they took it. Like they had to have taken it from my desk and been like, oh, this will be a good thing for me to definitely steal from this person. She won't mind. She's a nobody. Yeah. (laughs) Who said that about you? I'll kill them. I'll kill them. (laughs) I was just talking about like one of my most petty interoffice cord stealings. Look, I mean, look, look, I just found I just found two bricks now. So I have I have multiple bricks and no fucking cord. I love that you're calling them bricks. (laughs) What are you calling them? What are they? Coke. They're, bricks. They're worth Coke. They're worth that amount. Oh, well, looky what I found. <laughs> nope, that's for a phone. Okay. <laughs> Hold one. Se- okay. She has multiple keys worth of <laughs> okay, multiple now, kilos of Mac cord. Yeah. Now I've got this one, but it's so short it will not reach. Oh, wait, this is also a phone charger. That's for phones. Oh, my God. Oh, thank God. Oh, Raymond. Okay, here we go. Thank you. <laughs> We're really doing it now, guys. Really <laughs> doing it now. Um, hey, everybody. Welcome to Busy Phillips is doing her best. I clearly am. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is exciting. What an exciting day. What an exciting time. What an exciting world we live in. <laughs> I am plugging my phone in. Michelle Williams just texted me. Oh, oh how's please. Michelle Williams? You know what? She's doing okay. She's uh, filming a movie for, you know, um, Kelly Reichert. You That's know, who good. She's Wendy she's and good Lucy, at that. and yeah, they're good at it. Um, I will. Yes, I will. Um, uh, she's like her muse, right? Like she yeah. does all of Kelly's movies, but they're always like it. Always involves like Michelle, like not showering for six weeks or something. And I'm like, dude, you know what I mean? I will never be that kind of an actor. You're the not one- that method. Well, I mean, I can be like a little bit. Like I get into it. You know what I mean? Um, you know about comedy biz. Have we talked about that on this pod? <laughs> I don't we? know that we have talked about it. Well, I, there's a person that shows up sometimes called comedy biz when I'm like in the groove <laughs> of working on my shows on, on a show. And it's everybody in my real life hates her because it's a lot. It's too much to deal with. It's too much energy coming at you. Um, but we're that's Casey chiming in. Per Hi, usage. you know, you know me, <laughs> Casey St. On. It's your friend Casey, and uh, very excited that we have Panam Patel joining us today. Listen, remember when we had Ryan O'Connell? Do you guys remember that? I paused for you to answer. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, no, not for you guys. <laughs> I paused for the audience at home to answer. Remember Ryan and special. And so now you've watched special. So you know who Ponem is. So there you go. Also, you're on Space Force, which people have. Also, you've been nominated for an Emmy, which is for special. Yeah. Yeah. More than I can say for myself. Right. Ponem. So <laughs> that's you know the I mean? one thing I have on you. <laughs> you definitely have you definitely have that on me for sure. And <laughs> And I always think awards are bullshit until you get nominated for them and then they feel very real. Oh, yeah. I was like, what is this? This isn't going to happen. And it happened. And I'm like, what am I going to wear? Exactly. <laughs> That's 100% correct. And also, like, just fucking fun and good. And yeah. I'm glad you were recognized and you should be recognized and just, you know, all of it. Um, I'm sending this thing to Michelle. Casey yeah, I mean, likes to listen. tell people... <laughs> Just, you know what? Busy uses Casey. the top of the podcast to catch up on a little work, a little business, a little housekeeping. You know, you're, you're lucky that I'm not doing my post right now for Center for Reproductive Rights <laughs> because because uh, the Women's Health Care Protection Act was just reintroduced to Congress today. That's good news. Wow. Today. It's great fucking news. And guys, later in the show, we talked to Natalie Morales, who directed this great movie called Plan B. Um, it's out now. You can watch it. Don't watch it with your teens, but watch it. And then maybe your teens will also watch it. Um, <laughs> but it deals a little bit with uh, how hard it has become in many, many, many places in this country to acquire birth control and or access to even like just women's health care, period. Um, and uh and so the I talk in the interview about the Women's Health Care Protection Act at the end, but it was reintroduced today in Congress. And so I really need everybody listening. I really need you guys to do this. I really need you to call your representatives this week. This week. If you could call every day, I'll give you something. If you can <laughs> prove to me, I'm not even shitting you. If you can prove to me that you fucking called and left a message or called and spoke to someone every day, Asking your representat- your representatives, not your representation, that's what we have because we're actors, <laughs> um, your representatives to make, to pass the women's health care WIPA to the women's pr- health care, wait, women's health care protection act. My brain is really going <laughs> today. Um, and if you can prove to me that you did it every day, and that's both senators and congressmen. So you got to like, you do have to make some calls. Yeah. But as we all learned in the last year, making calls is, like, not fucking hard. No. It's easy. You can sit while doing it. Punam, did you make calls for political purposes? I did. And I was also doing a couple of phone banking things. Who'd you phone bank for? I phone banked, um, well, generally for Biden in Florida, because that's where I'm from originally. And my state is trash. But then I also... um, 
foam bait for this candidate who unfortunately didn't win, but her name is Amanda White Eagle. But it was actually really interesting because especially when I was calling in Florida, I was like, Ugh, I'm scared. People were really nice. I don't know. If most of the time. Me- yeah. Most of the time they are. I, th- I would say sometimes people tell you to get fucked. Yeah. But that's like rare. And then the one time member, Casey, I told the story that I was phone banking and the guy was super mean. And then I just was like, hey, I hope whatever you're going through is okay. And then he like fully told yeah. me that his mom had died and he was yeah. like having a hard time. And I was like, buddy, I'm really sorry. You know, I think sometimes, yeah, like people who make those calls, like bless, bless them. But I'm, but having phone banked when I do receive phone banking calls now, I'm very nice. Yes. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Because everyone, no one's getting paid to do this. Like, no, they're just nice people doing it because they care. I, in Florida, I ended up talking to this literally like 400 year old Jamaican woman for like an hour. She told me her entire life story of how she immigrated here, everything she did for her family. And she's like, I didn't work this hard. She had an accent, um, but I won't do it. Uh, That's great. I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We don't need any Chet Hanks on here. Yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Um, but like she said, she like forces every single person in her family and extended family to go vote because she's like, I didn't come here and do all this shit for y'all to sit on your asses and not vote. That's amazing. It was that's amazing. True. Yeah, that's, that's a so true story. Cool. I always feel like when people phone bank to me, I'm always like, got it. I'm on board. I try to let them yeah. off the hook so fast. I'm like, yeah. you have bigger fish to fry than me. I'm, I'm, I got it. I'm, I'm, yeah. we're on the same team. You, me, same. Yeah. Get, get going. Good work. Yeah, but it is exciting when you do the phone banking and you get someone like that, Casey, because then you get to like go back to the phone, like the virtual phone bank and yeah. be like, Check. have have a confirmed, like yeah. gonna vote, you know, whatever. Already it's voted. Exciting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, anyway, guys, this, the Women's Health Care Protection Act is super important. Um, it's a federal bill. It has to pass. If we have any, we don't have, we can't, we know what has happened to the Supreme Court. It's a fucking bummer. It's a bummer. It's what's happened. It's where we're at. The good news is that checks and balances, some shit. I don't know. I didn't finish college. What I do know is that the Women's Health Care Protection Act will essentially um, codify Roe so that states such as Mississippi and Texas cannot pass these extreme bans on women's health care. And uh, and in, in addition to that, they've added the Equal Access to Abortion Coverage and Health Insurance, the EACH Act of 2021, which is w- works hand in hand with WIPA, but it's not the same thing. But that is basically a federal bill that ends the Hyde Amendment. So it eliminates federal coverage restrictions on abortion care, which is super important. Anyway, guys, listen. It's just one of those things like where I think... Listen, I think for women, it's one of those things where maybe you're my age and you're like, I'm past this. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not worried about accidentally getting pregnant. Or maybe you're very young and you're not at that age where you're sexually active and you're worried about getting accidentally pregnant. Or maybe you're not having sex with guys and you're not worried about... I was about about to say that. I was about to say that. ...worried about accidentally getting pregnant. But here's the thing. We all know somebody... We all love somebody who, for whatever reason, might be in a position where they need this type of health care. And so it's a very simple thing to do just to protect half of our country's freedom and autonomy over their bodies. It's just a very simple thing to do. And so whether or not you're concerned about it for yourself so many people in your life, so many people that probably it's a it's a hard thing to just bring up over Starbucks, you know what I mean? But so many people that you're, you know, how they always say, look to your left and look to your right. Like you're probably looking at somebody who might have this concern or who has had this concern or will have this concern coming up very soon. And, you know, we're talking about Natalie's movie plan B. Also, this season on special, but I'm like, you know, you 
you, your your character's very sex positive young woman, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And I think it's like an amazing example for how young women should live their lives. But with that, we need to protect a certain amount of freedom for half of our country, half of our country, more than half. Yeah. And I, I just feel like when I think about it, I'm just like, how is, what are we even doing? Why does anyone even fucking care what I do with my body? You don't even know me. <laughs> and I think it's like even beyond healthcare, I'm just like, this is where it starts and it can go to even worse places. Like if we can't even have autonomy over our own bodies as women and can't even make decisions for ourselves, like if they take that away from us, like it's going to be handmaids real quick. (laughs) Well, that's the truth. And like, listen to me, here's, here's, it's like, to me, it's like always, well, first of all, don't even get me fucking started. (laughs) Abortion and the religious right taking abortion on as their cause has always been a red herring for like other racist motivations. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is in this, in this moment, it's also a red herring for this breaking news that I got from the New York times. Hey guys, the 25 richest Americans paid little to no federal income taxes for years, according to IRS filings obtained by ProPublica. That means people like Jeff Bezos, Michael Bloomberg, and Elon Musk benefited from just vagarities in the tax code between 2014 and 2018. Um, I, I've never been able to benefit from that. Like I've I pay so many taxes and I'm fine. I'm fine to pay taxes. I know I make a fair amount of money for doing this stupid thing that I do. So I'm always like, yeah, I'll pay my insane amount of taxes. Uh, The nation's richest executive paid a fraction of their wealth in taxes. Like so much, they paid so much less comparatively to what you listening or what Casey or Punham or I paid in taxes. And it's, fucking insane because of a complex web of loopholes in the tax code and that's literally put there by wealthy oh yeah rich it's all white men to keep wealthy rich white men wealthy and rich and they want to keep everyone else from becoming that <laughs> and so they want to control as much as they fucking can which includes fundamental health care and our rights, our fundamental rights. And even if you don't believe in it, even if you don't fucking, if you're like, I would never, that's the thing. It's fine. You don't have to. Yeah. No one is asking it's you like, to. Punam, you're too young to remember this, but do you guys remember that cartoon, Wacky Races, where it's just like all these <laughs> characters are trying to do this like car race and then all these characters are just like throwing obstacles in their way. Like just, you know, well, it's yeah. like it's like the Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote too. <laughs> I only know cartoons. Yes. That's yeah. all. <laughs> That's the only thing mm-hmm. I can, um, the only metaphors I can speak in. <laughs> no, you don't. But wait, wait, wait. Can I just sidebar for two seconds, Casey? Because my mother was like, called me and she's like, you know, Busy, I really love listening to your podcast. Um, Casey just is such, you are just so (laughs) lucky that you found her and that she wants to continue to work with you because she is just such a wealth of information and knowledge and she just knows so much. Aren't you lucky that you have her? That's such a mom thing. Essentially, you know. My mom does the same thing. My mom was like, now that special's over, do you think Ryan's even going to like call you? And I'm like, we're <laughs> friends. <laughs> I was like, you know, we're friends. Like we talk to each other all the time. And she's like, yeah, but the show's over. So like, maybe you guys won't. He'll be so busy. <laughs> He's so successful. He'll be so busy. And I was like, yeah, okay. Oh, moms. Well, I love your Classic. mom so much. And I feel so honored that she thinks that I'm cool, but mostly educated by cartoons over here, <laughs> you know. Not but true, it's, not but true. it's but true, yes, you know, that, that's what I think of is just that they're just throwing any obstacle that they can throw in anyone's way to make it impossible to get over this finish line that they've all been standing on the other side of for hundreds of years, just sipping cocktails and jiggling handfuls of nuts. Just their fucking yeah. mint juleps and fucking fedoras. <laughs> 
Get out of here. Also, like Jeff Bezos, that was announced he's like going to space this summer. Jeff Bezos, get your fucking ass to the ground and like pay your fucking workers. Yeah. And you're like a real piece of shit. I sat next to him once at the Golden Globes, guys. Oh, no big deal. No big deal. No big deal. It was fine. It was much more exciting when I got to sit next to J-Lo that one time. But fucking I wish I could sit next to him again because I'd be like, you're a piece of shit, dude. <laughs> Wait, did you see his little video on Instagram like announcing it too? No, I hate it. He's like asking his brother. Um, I just clicked on it and he's like asking his brother to join him in space. But he's like wearing like a cowboy hat and sunglasses. And he kind of like. And I'm like, who talks? Talk to their brother like that? It's very weird and like weirdly like a proposal kind of, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't wanna, like a prom Yeah, puzzle. like a it's prom proposal. And also like yeah. not to rag on anyone's appearance. I'm not ragging on it. I just noticed that Jeff might have gotten some Botox. Oh, yeah. Ooh. For sure. He's like getting all the work done now that he's got that the girlfriend that looks exactly oh, yeah. like his wife, by the way. So, and it's so right, weird. Jeff. And then, you know, all I was reading is that, like, you know, it's been like a big race between the billionaires to get to space. And he's beating Elon Musk and Richard Branson. He'll be the first billionaire guys, to get. It's to- like actual villains. <laughs> no, like, this is what I am saying to you. We are living in a fucking Marvel movie. Yeah. And everyone needs to wake the like, fuck literally. up. Like, literally. What the fuck? He's Dr. Evil. <laughs> No, it truly is like He's villain building, behavior. Yes, but also, or maybe, but they think that they're, you know, Robert Downey Jr.'s character, which yeah. I didn't watch the movie, so I don't know. What is it? He's a rocket man? No, he's a- <laughs> Iron Man. What is he? He's Iron, Iron man. man, but he's a, yeah. Iron Man's a good guy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They think, they think they're Iron yeah. man, men. They don't know they're Willem Dafoe. But also, they're all rich white men, so I want like a poor brown superhero- Yes. Like I want a superhero well, that's poor. 100%. Yeah, that's that's um <laughs> that's the Spider-Man Miles, you know. Oh sure, sure. Yeah. Right. He's, a, that's oh, right. he's a journalist. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. He's getting paid shit. <laughs> I mean, listen, whatever. You guys do what this, do with this what you will. But all I'm saying is that, like, these motherfuckers are literally running around going to space and, like, people can't feed their fucking families yeah. that work for them, that work at these corporations. They don't have health care. Our country has no health care. Like, they're ripping away, they're taking away rights from women left and right. I, I just, like, it's so fucking gross. And yeah, ah! it's, it's, I mean, it really, it weighed heavily on my heart yesterday when I was just reading that he's like, I've always wanted to go to space since I was a little boy. And as if that he felt that he was so special. Like literally, ev- like, yeah. Every little kid wanted to go to space. And so many little kids that wanted to go to space are fucking peeing in bottles in his warehouses. Yeah. Like, like they all wanted to go to space too. And now they just want to fucking sit down to eat lunch. You know what I mean? Like that just wanting something since you were a little kid dreaming of something doesn't like, it doesn't mean that you deserve it or, you know, I mean, good for you that your dreams are coming true, but it just, it weighed heavily on me. It's, it felt gross. Well, you, you, you know, my least favorite trait in a human is the lack of self-awareness. And I really feel like Jeff Bezos deeply lacks self-awareness. Yeah, <laughs> He just, and it's also like, it's just so unnecessary. Like, you are not helping anyone. You're not a scientist. You're not an actual astronaut that could go study something up there. And Yeah, like, he's just going for 11 you're just minutes. You're fucking going and wasting, what, billions of dollars? I mean, not to mention, like, the environmental impact yeah. I'm sure it's having. It's just unnecessary. What's he going to do to offset that? You guys, I fucking hate Amazon. <laughs> I try so hard not to order shit from Amazon, but like today, for instance, the only place I could find this really good uh, face sunscreen because my dad just had like another cancer thing scraped off his face. And probably it's because he uses SPF six or tanning oil. Oh, Lord. You know what I mean? I'm like, dad, that's not, I'm like, dad, that is literally not protecting you. That is 
amplifying use oil the to UVA, cook. UVB. Yeah. No shit. My father does not, he's not interested. I mean, bless. But anyway, uh, so I, I was like, I'm going to buy this sunscreen. And the only place I could fucking find it was Amazon. So I was like, well, I guess here we go. It, but isn't it. that so like capitalism to put it on us? to solve these issues. And it's like, for sure, we all need to be more conscious of what we're supporting, but it puts it solely on us. And I'm like, what's really going to make the difference is the people up top changing their ways. Like we are definitely going to change our ways because like we can, we don't need things to be delivered within a day. We will be okay waiting. We can order it from somewhere else. We can go to a store now and buy it. Like that's fine. We can put forth that effort. Also, we're privileged enough to be able to do that. Some people can't. But like, I hate when... It puts it all on us as consumers. And it's like, we're, we'll do our part, but we're not the ones that are going to be able to topple this whole thing unless someone up top changes too. Right. Yeah, I agree. It's 100% true. Oh, boy. Function of beauty. Function of beauty. What is your function? The function of beauty. Yeah. Guys. Guess what I'm doing right now? Guess what I'm doing, Casey? Guess, guess, Are guess. you taking the function of beauty quiz? I am taking it. You know why? You're identifying your most recent hair goals for the new yes, season? Because, yes, because my hair goals have changed. And so new, I need new things to be addressed with my function of beauty order. And so I'm doing it. And that's how easy it is, guys. That's how easy it is. Plus, I'm kind of obsessed with the fragrances for this season. Mango. Lavender. Lavender, rose, peach, eucalyptus, pear. Perfection. Fragrance. <laughs> fragrance free. If you are not into scents, but you will be into scents, and people will be in stores and they will be like, who smells so damn good? And you're going to turn around and you're going to be like, it's me. And then that person is going to give you the job of your dreams. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen, but here's what I'm going to tell you. It could. Can't promise. Absolute, can't prom- can't, I can't promise one way or another. But it could happen. It could happen. It definitely could happen. I love Function of Beauty so much. Every person in my home uses Function of Beauty and has answered their own questions on their own quiz. And I like that it's sulfate and paraben free. It's vegan. It's cruelty free. And there's over 60,000 real five-star customer reviews. But the sulfate and paraben th- free thing is important to us because Cricket has sulfate allergies. Um, and the Function of Beauty fans are wild about the fragrances. Yeah. It you smells guys, really just good and fresh and juicy. The lavender so relaxing. Juicy. Yeah. I'm doing lavender because I like to be relaxed. So I like to turn my beauty routine into an aromatherapy session. <laughs> anyway, guys, I am a fan. I am a paying customer. That is a true fact. And I've worked out a deal for you guys. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash best. Take the quiz I just took. Save 20% off your first order. It applies to their full range of customized hair, skin, and body products. That's functionofbeauty.com slash best so that they know you heard about it from us. And you get 20% off your order. Functionofbeauty.com slash best. Helix, Helix sleep. Remember, Helix is the best. Is that good? That was good. Here's what I'm going to say, guys. Have you gotten your Helix mattress yet? Have you? If you haven't, you need to keep listening. If you have, I love that for you. I'm happy for you because I have my Helix mattress and I love it. And I used to have like a lot of issues with my arms and like my hands going numb and all this stuff. And I realized I was sleeping on a mattress that was not doing it for me. Yeah. And listen, Helix Sleep has a quiz. We love quizzes. I know you know which princess you are. I know you've done the BuzzFeed, you know, like which Brooklyn Nine-Nine character are you? So you take the Helix sleep quiz. It's two minutes. It matches your body type and sleep preference to the perfect mattress for you. You're like, oh, I'm a side sleeper. I like, you know, a firm mattress, whatever. 
Everyone's unique. Helix knows that. They have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft and medium and firm mattresses. Mattresses that are great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. And even a Helix Plus mattress for people who maybe weigh more. I took the Helix quiz um, and I am obsessed with the mattress that I got. Uh and you love yours too. Yeah, I love. I love like a nice firm mattress. I Me too. spend a ton of time actually sitting on my bed working. It's just how I always mm-hmm. have worked. I like same, to same. I like to get on my laptop on my bed. I watch mm-hmm. a ton of TV on my bed because that is my work and so I'm just obsessed with my Helix mattress hanging out on I, the bed. I when we're done when we're done with this just so you know, I'm going to get right on back into my bed with my Helix mattress and I'm going to watch some more episodes of that show that I started. <laughs> anyway, Helix is amazing. You don't have to take our word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by both GQ and Wired Magazine. I feel like they know what they're talking about, and so do we. Just go to helix.com slash best. Take the two-minute sleep quiz, and they're going to match you to a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life, I promise. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. So if you you don't love it, they will come pick it up for you. But that's not going to happen because you're going to love it. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash best. And the pillows are really nice too. I'm really very picky about pillows and the pillows are just as nice as the mattress. Yeah, so for $200 off, all mattress orders and two free pillows for only our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash best. Do you guys want to hear about my not what I'm not doing my what I did not do my best at this week? I do. Yeah. I know that's not what this show is called. No, let's go. Well, it's okay because (laughs) let's talk about it. You started out with the intent to do your best at something and in a very first of all first of all i want to say this first of all first of all in my defense first of all i want to say this mark was out of town last week and it was just me and these kids and we don't have a like nanny anymore you know we don't have like really that many babysitters that we can call upon here in New York. Like every, uh, every girl that my assistant Ray went to college with who lives within a 50 mile radius of New York has been called upon, but they all actually have real jobs, but they will like come and babysit my kids. Sometimes I, my point is I do need to like seek out some real health, Healthcare? Nope. Childcare. I do need to seek out some real childcare in New York. Um, That being said, oh, and I had like a a crazy, I had the second wave of press for Girls 5 Eva last week because there was like some, you know, for your consideration stuff like that, you know, they want to do like all that award stuff. And then it was launching in Canada. The series was launching in Canada. So I had agreed to do all the Canadian press and then we do our podcast. And I had, we already had things scheduled. And so the kids were at school for a portion of the day, but like after school, what is going to happen? So Ray arranged some babysitters to get them after school but then as soon as I was done with work I was like it was just me and the kids which is great guys I'm not I'm not complaining I'm just saying it was like a lot to juggle me and Raymond (laughs) and and but the kids were like like we had a great time like they were happy we like hung out in the evening I made dinners I, they were fed they went to they were bathed they went to bed you were doing it they did not Listen, I was living it. I was doing it. They did not, they did not do homework. Not one day did I enforce homework because you know what? Isn't it the summer? Like, oh no, they're still in fucking school. It's insane. They get out like in a week and a half. It's June. Um, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but uh but I also felt like 
let's just, this one's just a pass. Like, I don't even, I don't even know. Like, I don't, the, here's the truth is that Mark is uh, really taken over in many ways. Like a lot of, he's really like t- taken the domestic duties of uh, child helping with school stuff and like scheduling with the kids. Like he's taken that on. And, um, and so I do sometimes like feel a little bit like, oh, okay, what, do, what do we do? How do I sign them out on the app? What? Huh? But Casey, you know this. When you're you not in the working, loop, it's yeah, it's yeah. hard. And by the way, you can, you can fall out of the loops very so quickly. quickly with like kid stuff and, um, but anyway, so it was actually like really nice for me to like, you know, am like I got the kids up every morning and got them to school on time and they have staggered arrivals because of COVID and did the COVID tests. And I made this breakfast sandwich for Birdie one day that was I Instagrammed because it was so good. And I'm not a great I'm not great at cooking stuff. Pun on, that's not my I don't thrive. It's not your thing. Okay? It's not my thing. It's not my thing. You may be listening and thinking like, it sounds like parenting is not your thing, but (laughs) I'm going to tell you, I am great at some things and like we all have our strengths. So anyway, but so it was good. Like I was feeling really good. And then like the weekend was approaching and I was like looking at my, whatever, looking at my phone and I was like, oh my God, is it really going to be 95 degrees tomorrow? What? What? that's weird. What do we do? I live in New York now. I don't live in Los Angeles. What do you do with your kids when it's 95 degrees and it's COVID? I can't like take them to a museum. Like I'm still, they're not, my little one's not vaccinated and Birdie's second shot was Sunday. So I was like, what what do I do? What do I do? I was like, "Ah, what a pool. We need a pool. That's what we need. We need a pool, something outdoor or like a fountain or something. And so I like did all this research online and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I booked this pool to take the kids to. And it was kind of expensive. And I was like, that's weird for a pool, like, I, which I thought was, I thought it was like kind of public. But then I was like, but that's, I don't know, maybe that's just like, I got a special seating. I got reserved seating. So maybe that makes sense. And then I even had Ray like follow up with the email like that they had for information it was in Brooklyn and he like made sure that it was all good the reservation was all good so then the next so Saturday got up I had I had gotten one of Ray's friends who literally has a real job she agreed to come over and hang with Cricket in the morning so I could go do my workout like I even was like I'm fucking nailing this like I got this and I came back from my workout. I was feeling good. We're going to go to the pool. Birdie was like, oh, I'm not going to a pool. No, that's not happening. <laughs> I was like, Birdie, come on. Birdie is like almost 13. And like, yeah. I kind of, I, then I was like, I guess, I guess you're old enough to stay home alone. Like, I guess that is actually, this is the age. And I texted Mark and I was like, do you think it's okay? And he was like, I actually do. You're only going to be, you're only going for a few hours, right? I was like, yeah, I can't imagine we'll like melt in the heat and like I had kind of reached out to a few people like I don't know that many people here but a few people who have kids and was like hey do you guys want to come with me to this thing I I don't know what it is but like I got you know I got admission to it and it's a pool and everyone's like oh we're doing this we're doing that oh sorry whatever and I was like oh, okay I can go by myself with me I can do it <laughs> And thankfully, Ray was like, you know, it is really hot today. Maybe I'll come with you. And I was like, okay, good. Um, also, by the way, I do want to say this. Multiple people that I texted were like, my, I'm not, my body is not ready to be seen yet in a pool, like a pool. I was like, Aww. fuck everyone. Like, yeah. And it wasn't women. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, one, one. But I just like, I, that I have no patience for. Anyway. <sighs> Cricket was so excited. I have the cutest picture of Cricket in her little outfit. And I told the babysitter I would drive her home because she lives in Brooklyn. So we all piled in. We go. And we find the place and we pull up. And I was like, huh, 
this is weird. It's just like there were like some people in kind of like bathing suit type cover up outfits, like standing out front, like smoking. And I was like, that's weird. But I don't know. I guess people smoke. And then there was like kind of like this line um, <laughs> to get in. I was like, huh, that's strange. So we pile out of the car. We go and we're standing in the line. And we go up to the guy who's like a he looks like a host kind of at a restaurant and we're like I'm like hi we have a reservation for the pool it's under <laughs> busy Phillips and he's like oh and then he said my yeah and he was like oh okay uh oh yeah we just have one problem um ma'am this is a there, there are no children allowed at the pool <laughs> and I was like what and he's like yeah there's there's no kids allowed at the, this pool and I was like well, it didn't say that on the website and like Cricket's face like started to melt, you know? And he was like, hold on one second, just hold on one second. And so he disappeared for what felt like forever. And then he came back and he's like, you know what? You know what? That they're, they would love, you're just one kid. Like they'd love to like have you at the pool. Yeah, so we'd love to have you guys. You can come to the pool. Okay, <clears throat> we walked in and this is what I had found and taken my seven-year-old to. <laughs> Do you guys ever go to Vegas? <laughs> Have you ever been to Vegas? I just went to Vegas this past weekend. <laughs> okay. I don't, I haven't been to Vegas in like 15 fucking years, but they used to have this thing at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino on Sundays called Rehab at the Pool. Stop it. And essentially, <laughs> and essentially it's like a nightclub at a pool during the day where people are like coming down off of their E or their Molly or they're, or they're still like doing Coke or whatever. And they're like meeting people and like hooking. That no. is what I took. That is what I booked. It is what oh I my took God. my seven year old to. And then I just was like, oh, fuck. And she crumped. I was like, try. Then I was like, I was like in a state of panic because they've like said, okay, you guys can come in. They, I ha- we, I, we did have chairs. We did. We had a whole seating area. <laughs> and and, and then Cricket's just like, like wearing her little sunglasses, oh. still, wearing her ma- still wearing her mask. It is easily 105 degrees outside at this point. And she's just, I see her, she's crumpling. She's oh. like crumpling. And she's like, I can't, I don't want to stay here. I don't want to stay here. And I was like, oh baby, are you sure you don't want to, I'll get in the pool with you. Do you just want to d- like jump in and then we can go? And she's like, we have to go home right now. We have to go home right now. And I was just like, oh, fuck, this is terrible. I was like, right, wait, I can't. So I pulled her onto my lap and I need, she wouldn't move. Like she was like frozen. I pulled her onto my lap and like was just trying to calm her down a little bit. The, these guys came over. Like this is a place like they handed me Voss water. Do you <laughs> yes, know what I mean? Yes. It had like, bottle yeah, service like, and... Yeah, there yeah. was bottle service. Oh, God. There was a bar. We were we were actually our seats were prime <laughs> because they were right next to the bar. So like people were literally like, I mean, it was such a fucking monumental fail that was, by the way, and all I could think was thank the sweet Lord I let Bird stay home. Because yeah. you don't know my older child, but they are not easy yeah at times <laughs> and that would have been like cricket silently crumpling I could like handle and it like broke my fucking heart she'll but forgive you birdie oh birdie would have never forgiven me yeah ever, ever there would have been there would be it would be done I would be done we would be I don't even know what we would do I'll be kicked out of the house anyway so <laughs> So then, like, these bouncer guys come up. Not and bouncers at a pool? <laughs> yes, there's bouncers. Not even a lifeguard, bouncers. And I don't think you're understanding me. I did not take my child to a pool. I took her to a nightclub yeah. during the day with a pool as, like, the main event. There were butts hanging out. There were, like, there were women literally wearing thongs. Liquid STD. Bikinis. Six feet of liquid STD. Oh. You guys, it was, so the bouncers come up and they feel so bad. They were so, by the way, they, those guys, the guys that were like running this, by the, uh, 
I, a racket. I'm sure they were making a billion fucking dollars and good for them. But like the guy, they were so sweet and they were like, can we bring her a mocktail? We, let's bring, no. her, bring her a mocktail. And I was like, I think we're, no, I think we're just going to probably call it. We're just going to call it. And they're, they're like, like we've got bit. candy cigarettes if she wants some of those. I swear to God. I And meanwhile, I'm melting. I'm like, you know, I sweat all the time. Anyway, I'm pouring sweat. I'm like so horrified. My poor kid is like devastated that they, like, I was like, I know it's not. Oh, God. Oh, not. Oh, now I'm going to cry. I'm like, I know it's not L.A. I know it's not like our house in L.A. that has like a pool. But New York is different. You go to pools. You, you know, like you're like with other people. Oh, my God. And then I took her to this horrible place. No. <laughs> she, was like, she was just like so upset. But then she like kind of like poked her head up and she was like, I would take a mocktail. <laughs> So they brought her, they brought her this like watermelon drink and she just sat there and like sucked it down while I held her. And and when she was done with the mocktail, I was like, and we're good. I think we should just head out now. (laughs) She's like, yeah, let's go home. So we went home. Yeah. I mean, that was, I would take a mocktail. (laughs) I think just like her little head. Yeah. I, you guys, I was so, I, I was in such a like a the throes of like a meltdown my like a major meltdown myself I couldn't like I couldn't even Instagram story it like I couldn't in that moment I couldn't even be like oh my god you guys look at what I've done like I was spiraling so fucking hard about every life choice I have made since the moment I moved to Los Angeles at 18 oh my god. like I was just like what have I done to everyone that loves me and that I love to end up at this fucking Las Vegas pool club in Brooklyn with my seven-year-old who's just like, I just am hot. I just want to swim. Like, what is, what do you do? Like, I'm, I thought we were going to get like a hot dog at the pool and swim. And anyway, Aww. we came home and thankfully my sister's kid, Josie, and cricket play like Roblox together. Do you know what that is, Ponem? No. I know. I mean, you don't have children. You're young and you, why would you? It's like a game that let kids play and they can play online together. And, um, and it's been a real lifesaver in the last year and a half of COVID. Um, So my niece, like, texted, you know, whatever, that that she was on Roblox and like, did cricket want to play? And I was like, yeah, play Roblox and then I went upstairs and like took like all my shit off like everything uh, like put on my Mr. Nightgown I got into bed and like curled up in a ball and sobbed and then I know and then I watched Hacks I watched the first five episodes of Hacks which I hadn't seen yet and um Bertie had had Bertie had a friend come over at some point oh I fed them I made sure they the kids had eaten um but then I was just like feeling so sorry for myself and like so sad. And then I texted Tina Fey and Meredith Scardino together. And I was like, hey, guys, so how the fuck do you have children <laughs> in New York? I texted Casey, too. Um, I was like, how, how the fuck do you have children in New York when it's 95 degrees out? What am I supposed to do with them? I don't I don't know how to do this. I can't do this. And uh, they both texted me back. They were so sweet. And Tina was like, wait, come to our pool. Like we have, they, you know, whatever. And I was like, oh, I can't put my children (laughs) through that right now. But I will invite myself over tomorrow (laughs) if like you, if the pool still stands around. She was like, yeah, of course. So I will say the next day we went over and Penelope um, Richmond, who plays my daughter on Girls 5 Eva and is Tina and Jeff's daughter and cricket are basically the same age and so like cricket had like a full day in the pool with penelope and her friend and like i felt a little bit better but still questioned most of my life choices but (laughs) that's what i that's just what it is this is what it is 
Uh, I think you do. That's it, guys. But you know what? Look, look at mm-hmm. how much you are the opposite from, like, say, Drew Barrymore's mom that brought her to Studio Fifty Four back in the day, intentionally. But I am. <laughs> that's like what I did. But no, accidentally. It was a but accidentally, and you got her a mocktail, yeah. and then you got a her mock-tail. the fuck out of there. <laughs> I mean, she was not, I was not about to let her go to the bathroom at that place, <laughs> no. you know? But like, there's definitely people doing, speaking of bricks, there's definitely people doing lines in that bathroom. <laughs> oh, yeah, a hundred fucking percent. Oh my gosh. I mean, it was really not, I felt like, I also like, you know, it just plays on my whole thing. Punham's like, I don't know this. No. I should keep crying. <laughs> But like, no, it plays I'm like on my- an end pass, so I'm just like, my heart's breaking too. But I think you did. Listen, I you did do your best. You did. You tried. You know what? Maybe I did. You did I try my your best. best. I always try, but that's the thing. Like you, like I really try. I try so hard. I that's the problem. Like yeah. I try too hard. Like I try too hard at everything, and then like you know, I'm at the fucking club pool like you know it's just like maybe I just if I didn't try so hard all the time things might be easier no you have to try hard because things are like life is hard you have to be easy on yourself because literally all we can do is try like we cannot control the outcome ever all we can do no. is try. And you live in New York is a hard place to New live. York will kick your well, ass. And remember that thing that you told me that um, our friend Freckle once told you sometimes something expensive is worse. Yeah. That should be yeah. the, the motto for the city of New York. Sometimes things that are expensive are worse. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, I think a free pool is probably yeah. where you're looking to bring public a public pool. Oh yeah, is there like a water like a water fixture that you they can like run through? Well, there's there's a play, <laughs> there is there's a playground close by here that is like a water playground in the yeah. summer. Yeah. Um but that I was like trying to like give them a I I feel, you know, I feel They wanted to be guilt. submerged. Who doesn't want to yeah. be submerged yeah. in water? Always. I'm such a water I baby. I think New York does yeah. have a number of like free, low cost pools that are geared to um, children, but it does get a little scary when you start to see the rules. When you, whenever you read rules for like a pool that are like you can't have like open bleeding wounds and you know you're sure. like no diarrhea, then you start to be no, like, it's always no <laughs> active diarrhea within two weeks. Yeah, and then I was you're like, like, if I oh. had diarrhea two weeks ago, I can't get in a pool. <laughs> Two weeks ago. I mean, also, also, guys, just stuff, you know, with my IBS and spastic colon. <laughs> yeah. Who remembers? My two, who even remembers? Two weeks you know? is insane. Yeah. It's like I've taken 14 showers since I last had diarrhea and I can't get in this pool. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't like that. So, you know, Ugh. it's the rules are for for that type of pool are very off-putting, but I think those might be the types of pools that maybe you're shooting for to take crickles to in the future. Maybe. I don't know. What but about also, like a hotel pool? They're like a well, nice hotel house. Can I tell you something? First of all, yeah. That yes. Well, no. In New York, my experience is that the hotel pools are like the size of your thumbnail. Mm. Mm-hmm. They're like, they're like, oh, this hotel has like a beautiful rooftop pool. And then you go up and there's like five chairs and it's yeah. teeny tiny. Yeah. And also I feel like those places too also get like, it's like becomes like a real scene, right? Like to, like in Sex in the City where the, they go to the Soho house. Oh, right. <laughs> right? Oh. Guys, I know I'm referencing something from 30 years ago, but... When Kim Cattrall's character is trying to get in. Yeah. Cool. Anyone? Anyone? No, anyone? I remember. Oh she God. gets full on rejected. How old are you? I know. I, I was like, I think you guys think I'm younger than I am. I'm 36. All right. You're a, you're a full adult woman. Yeah. You are a full adult. But you're still, still a millennial. Yeah. I am a geriatric millennial. <laughs> you're a geriatric <laughs> millennial. Yeah. You are. Do you identify with millennials or not really? I think I never took the time to like figure out what millennials are or what their years are. 
So it's like, I don't know. But you know <laughs> what, you like, know what the, you know what the character traits of millennials sure. are. Sure. I think I also like, I'm a kid of immigrants. So I always That's say, what I, I'm always like, yeah. oh, I'm ES. Like if I ever like don't know something or I mispronounce something, I'm like, I'm ESL. <laughs> but I learned like. English and Gujarati, which is um, the state in India we're from, at the same time. So I feel like there was lots of, like, classic American things that I, like, missed out on growing up. And, like, classic, like, American references that I'm like, meh. Like, well, I also think I do also. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, on, I'm not going to lie. You didn't miss much. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I do think, I do think that so much of the generational, uh, like, like, the defining characteristics of a generation are perpetrated on them by their parents. Yeah. So, I mean, to a certain extent, there are also like extenuating things, like you're saying, like pop culture references or like the internet or access to information. But I think the thing about millennials being like not wanting to work hard or whatever is because they had the helicopter parents. And in my experience, and I don't want to generalize, but my friends who are, children of immigrants um, or even, you know, like second gen or third gen did not, were not raised the same way. No, I got my first job when I was 15. Um, I was like excited (laughs) to get a job over the summer. Where did you work? I worked as a waitress at Cafe Vienna. It was like an Austrian restaurant. They were serving like schnitzel and stuff. Wait, where did you grow up? In Vero Beach, Florida. Oh. oh, right. Yeah. So I'm like kind of a little trashy. I grew up in like a super white town. It was like half rich whites and half trash whites and then like us. And so I was- Was just, that hard? It was, you know, um, like when we talk about like, you know, being a millennial or absorbing things, I felt like I grew up like absorbing opposite things. I was absorbing like Indian culture and traditions from my family and then going to school at like, you know, my parents worked really hard to send me to this like private school in town that was like, Episcopalian. It was like all rich white kids. And so it's like, then I was like absorbing that culture, which was just like never going to match up to who I am. So it was like very caught between two places where you don't feel like you fully belong. And so it was very interesting now as an adult to like look back at it and just be like, oh, like, wait, have you seen that new Lil Nas X video? son goes down he's like going back to his like high school self and you just see him like stand behind his high school self and just like put his hand on his high school self's shoulder I just like started fully bawling and I'm like why am I crying at a Lil Nas X video but it's like I wish that so much like I wish I could go back to my high school self and be like you're not white you're never gonna be white (laughs) you're never gonna be I I was just saying the other day I was like I wanted that like Tara Reid long like Misha Barton torso yeah like flat white torso and I was like it ain't gonna happen (laughs) yeah but also you're five four but also by the way same (laughs) but also same yeah like that's what was like cool it was like from here to here yeah and my boobs went to here and my like vagina started here so it was like my belly button was like in this four inches (laughs) but like yeah I wish I could go back and be like stop trying so hard. Just don't waste your time wishing. Yeah. For, I waste, I've wasted so much t- time in my life wishing for shit that's never going to happen. Ever. Like, it's just a time waster. Yeah, literally impossible. Yeah. I, I it feel is, you on but that. but, like, I, I guess it's fucking hard, man, because, like, when you are a child that's, like, different in any yeah. way, it's so all you... I mean, most kids want to assimilate. They want to, like, be like what they see being reflected back to them. But I do think that there's been a shift. Do you feel like there's a shift in culture in terms of, like, I mean, just with representation, period? I think it is shifting, yeah. I think it's, like, I understand. I forgive myself. I forgive lots of, like, immigrants. You align yourself to whiteness for safety a lot of times. And I think there is a shift just with the invention of, like, the internet and social media, which I know can be a nightmare. But, like, had I even seen someone that looked like me literally anywhere, that's, like, really powerful. So I think with things like that, it's, like, even if there's some kid who's marginalized in whatever way at their school, whether it's gender, sexuality, race, whatnot, if they can go on the internet and at least find one other person like themselves, like, that's such a huge comfort. That's such a boost of confidence. They can actually feel seen, you know? Well, that's what that's what we all want. 
Yeah, yes. we just want to yes. be seen. <laughs> That's it. Does it yeah. feel cool to you to be that representation? Like, does it feel cool or is it like a little nerve wracking to be representation? No, it feels good. I, it feels interesting because I like didn't, you know, I feel like a lot of people like talk to me about like body positivity and stuff. And I didn't really like lead with that. But I get like a lot of questions of like, what's it like to be plus size? And I was like, I don't really like say plus size because I think that's like, a weird term it means like a there's a, term, yeah. a size you should be and you're like in excess but like we're all just like different shapes stacked on top yeah. of each other so I like but yeah Punam you understand that I got asked those same questions Isn't that insane? and I was like, like I don't I mean it's not when I was I mean this was like yeah. years and years and years ago when I was on Dawson's Creek yeah and they're like you're like you know like plus size like the regular girl who's like I'm like, what? It's so I'm literally crazy. just not a double zero. I don't understand. Like, yeah, because my weight and size just can my look body. so different. Yeah. And it is like people are obsessed with each other's bodies. And it's it feels good to be someone that like, you know, is a different body shape and size. Cause I feel like I've gotten a lot of messages being like, wow, you were in a bathing suit and you looked so great. But I feel like sometimes it goes too much where they assume that I'm insecure in a bathing suit. So they're like, yes, queen, got it. You are amazing. And I'm like, I don't need that. Like, yes, right. I feel like they do that a lot for like non-thin women. They People feel like they need to overcompensate totally. and be You're like, so brave. you're fucking amazing. Oh my God, yes, kill it. Who gives a fuck? And I was like, I, I just put on a bathing suit like I do. Right. I have been my whole life. Um, yeah. And I, I always other, want to yeah. tell that person like, oh, also, by the way, I don't give a fuck. And I also don't give a fuck what you think, by the way. Well, yeah, right. they just assume that you, I mean, listen, we're all insecure and we're all confident. Like we're all yes. everything and it oscillates sometimes minute by minute. But like, yes. if you're a certain size, they just assume that you must be insecure, which I understand because it's like with societal standards of beauty. Yeah, we are like literally conditioned to hate our bodies. Yes. But to assume it sometimes, I'm just like, <sighs> no, I, I know I looked good. It's a lot. Good yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, obviously I think I look good. And I, yeah. I have to remind myself a lot that it's just like a reflection of what yes. that person's feeling. And yes. people like me about themselves. Well. Yes. Yeah, yes. for sure. But then on the other hand, I Sometimes thought, people yeah. don't mean well. Just yeah, some people don't. Sometimes people don't. So let's always remember that. Yeah, that that's sometimes hilarious. people are just dicks. You know oh, what I yeah. love about your character on special besides like, you know, the body stuff is like, I mean, yeah. you, you look amazing. That is like beside the whole point for me. I just love that the character that you're playing is like, she's, you know, she's not perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like she's, she can be shallow. She fucks up. She is in debt, <laughs> is in debt. And, you know, and I is, related to that. I was in debt at one point. In debt. She's yeah, kind like, of oof. does like makes weird choices that I really identify with, like very goes down some strange paths that self-sabotage. I think, yeah. I, I mean, I just, oh, I really, really love her. She she was just, uh, I really identified very strongly with your character in special. I think everyone, I mean, I encourage everyone to watch the show because I really love special a lot, both seasons, but this season, your character is yeah. just very, very, um, very strong showing for you this season. Thank you. Yeah, no, I was like so happy that we got like half hour episodes because I felt like Ryan got to finally like dive into people more. Yeah. And yes. I love yeah. that same thing about her, that she's like deeply flawed because it's like, I think it like helps with humanity to show deeply flawed people and find yourself like still rooting for them. Yeah. Because it means that like just because there's someone that maybe like does something you don't like, like doesn't mean you have to completely write them off. Yeah. Because I struggle with that. I mean, especially with like, the political landscape of the past decade, uh, I find myself really being like, nope, no tolerance. And there's certain things that we do not have to have tolerance for. But like, even we were talking about phone banking, like there was something powerful about being like, I don't agree with this person on anything. I can still be like, their monstrous behavior doesn't need to turn me into a monster because it is mm. monstrous for me to be like, fuck yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I don't want to be that way just because they are. And so seeing people that are flawed and like having a more compassionate view towards it, I hope like 
makes us interact with each other that way too. Because yeah. life it's is so, fucking hard. <laughs> life is hard. Life is hard. And also, like, I think we've said this before, it's either too short or too long. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, you just got to like, you got to, you literally got to do your best. Yeah. Were you doing your best at anything this week? Panem? I feel like I was trying to do my best at like listening to my body. <sighs> That's a good which one. Which is like something I've really been working on because I think... We're just so, especially as women, I mean, I had been on diets since middle school, like for almost two decades of my life. And then finally, when I was in my 30s, I was like, what am I doing? This is like so unkind. We're like so mean to our bodies and they do so much for us all the time. They like literally keep us alive and we don't even have to ask them. And so I just was like listening to my body. But as I mentioned, I went to Vegas this past weekend. What did your body tell you in Vegas? Well, I was kind was of like ignoring nachos. my... Yeah. <laughs> and I did have nachos. I, and did, I, you have, did you have them at the Hard Rock? No, I had uh, them at... They really but the nachos. first time I went to Hard Rock Cafe in London, I ordered nachos and Sylvester <laughs> Stallone was at the table next to us. <laughs> and his son ordered nachos. And I was like, me and Sly Stallone's son order the same thing. <laughs> I mean, but also, like, like how fucking out. wild that Sylvester Stallone eats at the Hard, Hard Rock, Rock in London. Yeah. I love that. How old were you? When was this? I I was probably like maybe 10. Oh my God. <laughs> I that was like super, amazing. super overweight and chubby growing up, but like so confident. My cool aunt had just taken us to Vidal Sassoon and like everyone got a trim and I was like, Bitches, we're at Vidal Sassoon. I got all my hair chopped off into this little, like, wolf girl haircut. No. <laughs> so I was, like, super overweight and had this tiny, like, literally I had, like, a Karen haircut. I thought I looked so fucking good. And then I was, like, at Hard Rock Cafe, saw Sylvester Stallone, and I was, like, life is good. I was, I like, mean, that this is, is me peaking. <laughs> they put a little flag at the top of the nachos. Like, it's like a mountain you're scaling. Oh my God, that yeah. is hilarious. So Vegas. That's really funny. Okay, so I went okay, to so Vegas. You're in Vegas. I was uh-huh. not quite listening to my body in Vegas because I played craps for the first time and I was full on screaming at the table because <laughs> everyone was like so hyped. I have no idea how to play the game. I didn't know the rules. But of course, I was Did like, you have beginner's luck? Yes. I made $50. Yeah. <gasps> That's amazing. Congratulations. Which is Congrats. like big for me because I'm usually like not even gambling at all. But I was the only woman at the table. And then when they found out it was my first time, I was the one rolling the dice. Yeah. All these people started buying in. So then there was like 20 people around this table. We were all like hyping each other up. I was drunk. I was like screaming. And then I lost my voice. And so then <laughs> what I I really, it's only been two days that I've been trying to listen to my body. But like right. yesterday, I just like finally shut the fuck up because I like talk a lot. I like, you know, took a nap. I ate good things. I nourished myself. I was like wearing soft clothes. (laughs) I do feel, I do feel like most people's reaction to Las Vegas is I'm going to listen to my body from now on. (laughs) I'm going to listen to the messages that my body is sending me. Well, because here's the thing, Las Vegas, like geographic, I've never been to a place that geographically tries to reject human life more. Oh, Like the place is like, get out of here. You're not meant to be here. Literally did it's not literally go outside. In death, isn't it in Death Valley? I don't yeah. know, but yeah, I didn't though I walk walked anywhere. through the valley of the shadow of death or whatever. Like the, the whole yeah. place is trying to get you to oh, leave. It's trash. And it's like Ugh. the sun is literally trying to kill you at all times. But speaking all of times. like trashy pool parties, like it, Vegas is like business as usual. I was probably the only person wearing <laughs> my mask because I guess if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear your mask. And I am, but I was like, I'm still gonna like wear my mask because I'm paranoid. Also, they're not asking for proof. No, no one, no one knows. And it's like, also you should be vaccinated probably for lots of things in Las Vegas that (laughs) we're just not even thinking about. Oh, for sure. But everyone was literally walking around in their bathing suit, like not even cover-ups, like full on just, and I was like, everyone do your thing. I know everyone's just like excited to be out. But I was like, Vegas is like America's armpit. It's like where all the trash gathers, but I think because I'm a little trashy, I actually like loved it, which was a twist of events because I was like, I'm not going to love Vegas. Why, why did you go? Just randomly. Like, I don't even know. I think we were at drinks with like a friend 
And like, he was like a big, big time gambler. And so he's like, I can get us a free room. And so we were like, okay. Sure. And we just like the hooked hookups, it. You just right. want to test that vaccine. Vegas. Yeah. yeah. I, but also the hookups in Vegas, like there's like, if you have a friend who that's in my, it's when next I was like level. in my 20s, I had a friend who was like, not a high roller, but she was like on a TV show and like had played in a celebrity poker tournament and was really good and had done very well. Yeah. And so the people, the head, the head, I don't know what they're, whatever they're called, the pit casino boss. people. <laughs> no, it wasn't the pit boss. It's like the, it's like the per, the coordinator, like the yeah. person who like hooks up all the free oh, sure, rooms sure. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like she had that that hookup and like it was it was pretty wild like she never paid for anything in Vegas. oh like, yeah is this even it's fucking wild well everything's um, more fun when you have money <laughs> like that sounds or awful if it's but free. like yeah, when it's free yeah and it's easier like mm-hmm. yeah when things are more convenient you're gonna have more fun if i had to like True. walk down the strip in a hundred and something degree heat and like you know go eat at the Johnny Rockets, I'd be like, fucking kill me. But okay, well, yeah. Whole pause on the Johnny Rockets, though, because <laughs> I do, we do, I do love of Johnny Rockets. I've me never too. eaten at one. I don't eat meat. <gasps> oh, oh, right. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, but well. we did. If you stand, don't eat meat, then fine. We did stand yeah, in line at White ahead. Castle because I guess they had impossible sliders and I'd never been. And literally, like, there was a bouncer at the White Castle and they're like, we're cut not service at 115. And it was like 107. And I was like, please, I'm starving. And like, literally, they cut the line off like right before us. And then I was like, even if we're getting the veggie one. And he was like, we don't serve that shit no more. And I was like, okay. (gasps) Went to bed. Devastating. That sucks. Devastating. My life is so hard. (laughs) There must be. I bet there's I bet there's an umami burger in Vegas. There must be an umami burger in Vegas. And they have they have uh impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Impossible. Yeah. No, there was Does Impossible send you meat? Do you get do you just have impossible sent to you? No, but I would love at me slide into the DMs. Impossible at impossible. DMs. It must uh, not. I mean, you're joking that your life is hard, but I mean, it must be kind of hard to get through a weekend in Vegas with not eating meat. You know, so actually, I think it's Aria, the owner of that or something recently went vegan. So he made sure all the restaurants have like vegan menus. Oh, that's and I'm not even fully vegan, but it actually wasn't that bad because Italian food is always vegetarian okay, friendly. Yeah. And then we did go to like Momofuku and they have a chickpea ramen. Oh, good. Which is okay. like, because I feel like level. Vegas is all about Very. like $2 steaks. steaks. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. But I, I can find a way. I'll always find. I love food. Ooh. So I'll, yeah. <sighs> I just, um, I really, this is not going to be shocking to anyone. I don't love Las Vegas. Yeah. I don't love it. Yeah. I don't love it. Although I do love shopping. And I think they have some of the best malls ever and like the most amazing shopping in Vegas, probably. But and I the don't, food, I, I've been like, in years. someone was like, and I oh, do love food. It's the highest concentrated of highest concentration of like really amazing restaurants. So, mm. yeah, but are they, or are they, is everybody just phoning it in because it's Vegas? And I will like, say two places I went were amazing, the other places were trash. Mm. Yeah. Like, mm. the, anytime you go to, I'm just like, it's hard for brunch to not be trash. Yeah. In Vegas. I mean, it's bulk. Brunch is bulk, right? Yeah. They're just making brunch for like 1,000 people and you're serving it yeah. to yourself like out of a trough. So, Guys, you know. I don't love brunch. It's hard is for that quality. Controversy? I mean, no. It's brunch not is, really. It's, brunch it's is like fine. It's like you're. But I also. Yeah. I'm also not a person as much as I enjoy drinking. <laughs> I'm not a person who likes a morning cocktail or whatever. No. Like. Or, or even just like, I, I don't like a noon cocktail. Like, I don't understand. I guess I just don't get it because like in, we go to Charleston a lot. I did a TV show there and a bunch of people that I'm friends with there, they're like, oh, you have to go to this place that has the best brunch or you have to go to this place that has the best brunch. And we would go and I'm like, I mean, this food is like fine. Right. And then you look around and people are drinking like Bloody Marys that have like burgers attached to them. Uh, yeah, and, like, and there's like, like, and there's like full like vegetable spreads coming out of their drinks. And I'm like, oh, these people just like this because they get drunk. You still have yeah. to get through the day. Like, yeah. I don't get it. What are people doing? And I'm doing? not a napper. I'm yeah. not a napper. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, 
I don't know. I, I mean, okay. if you love food, my husband loves brunch because he loves breakfast and he will literally just sure. eat breakfast for like, if you let him three hours, he will just <laughs> keep going. He'll have oatmeal, pancakes, waffles, Right. Do you do breakfast for dinner for him like I do for my children? Yes, always. My Lincoln makes breakfast for dinner frequently. Yes, they're just both big breakfast bitches. And um, I don't think Eli doesn't really eat at all. (laughs) Big breakfast bitches. Yeah, but but Matt and Lincoln. Eli and Birdie are so the same fucking person. Yeah, they just like he's he's one of those like, oh, I forgot to eat for six days kind of people. I know. Birdie is like Birdie is like I'm like, dude, what? is happening you're not and Birdie's like I don't know I mean I had like I feel like I ate some chips yesterday and it's like <laughs> no, Birdie what? what what that's why I was really proud of that is a very so foreign concept to me I don't I'm not I don't same but yeah. Mark is kind of like that you know oh really weird yeah. weird wait I want to tell you something did I ever t- mention this on the podcast it's not the last time I went to Las Vegas but one time Matthew and I came to Los Angeles my husband is Matthew Plenum, and yes. um we drove to Las Vegas just to like see what was up and we were driving down the strip and suddenly the strip was swarmed with people we rented a convertible suddenly the strip was swarmed with people, angry people. Our car was almost like overtaken with angry people. And we were like, what the fuck is happening? It was because it was the moment that Mike Tyson had bitten Evander Holyfield's ear oh off. Oh and all God. the people were swarming out of the fight angry. <laughs> and we were like just caught in the in the everybody that's like a real you you had like a that was a that's a real Forrest Gump moment <laughs> yeah was. like a historic <laughs> moment that you were there for it was wild and we were just caught in like it was like a stampede of people like you know it wasn't buffalo it was just angry people that were like what the fuck I just spent a million dollars to yeah. see a fight that was like one second long oh my god that's wild it was wild I, I did make a sports bet for the first time. I went rogue. I did so many. I like literally did all these things that are just like so out of character. But I was just like, I would like Vegas. I think I'm like the type of person that it's like, I'm not gullible, but like I am your target audience for most things. Like I will be like, okay, yeah, that does sound fun. Let's do it. Like I was betting on NBA games. Did you win? No, I bet on the Milwaukee Bucks. Who knows? Okay. And I lost $20, but I've bet $10 on the Phoenix Suns to win everything. Mm -hmm. And if I win, I will win $80. Oh, my my God. God. Fingers crossed. Fingers. Yeah. So everyone, send send your vibes. Send your vibes. So now I'm a Suns fan, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. That's how it happens. That's why all those, like, that's that's what what gambling does. Yeah. Yeah. It makes people fans. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I had no um, idea what I was doing. Fully invested. Wait, Casey, what did you do your best at this week? You didn't did, say. Um, I have just had like, I mean, it's not like a doing my best at, but I just had like a week of like uh, celebrating my dead people that I love. You know, <laughs> like we were talking about hacks earlier. I think I mentioned this on the podcast or maybe I did. I was saying that I was nervous to watch hacks because it reminded me of my relationship with Joan Rivers, writing for Joan Rivers. And I thought that it would make me very sad to watch it. Um and it did. It, it, it did make me sad um, to watch it. And it did remind me in a lot of ways of it. But in a lot of ways, it didn't. You know, obviously, it's it's a fictional story. Um, but I do think in a lot of ways, it's like an homage to her, which I think is great that she was like such a cultural icon that she's worth um making an homage to. So, um, yeah, so I watched it as well. And, um, so I've just been thinking a lot about her and I did an Instagram post with like a picture of Joan and me. And it was just nice. It was, um, her old assistant, (laughs) 
<laughs> her old assistant uh, commented on the post saying, do you remember being in her study and trying to explain to her what Twitter was? And I was laughing at that. And I was laughing at a scene in Hacks where um, the young writer is showing the main character, Deborah Vance, the comedian, um, the grape stomping video, which is literally <laughs> something that actually happened between Joan and I, which is so weird, but it's what? also... Right, like, like there's no way the writers knew that. No, no, yeah. no, no. Like, no. I just it's also like, like the first viral video. Yeah, sure. it's also like a really common... Like I also... Every person that I've ever... I was saying to my husband, I know that I've showed viral videos to Bette Midler being like, you never saw this video? You never saw that video? So, I mean, but I remember showing the video to to Joan and her being like, oh my God, I feel so bad. That lady got so hurt. Let's watch it like a hundred more times, you know? Um, so that was really nice. And then yesterday was Prince's birthday, which is like a holiday to me. So I was just, you know, having like a celebration of Prince's birthday, which is, you know, it's, it's always so funny to me because I love so much that people are like, oh, whenever I see anything about Prince, I think of you. I think that's so nice. I love it so much because people know that I'm such a fan, but I, it's also funny to me because people are like, will send me a message being like, Hey, I don't know if you know, but like today is Prince's birthday. And I'm like, who do you think you're talking to? Yeah. Who guys, obviously, do you think you're talking to or people will be like, I don't know if you saw this, but like, you know, like this line of Prince makeup came out and I'm like, yes, of course I know. <laughs> like, of course I know. Prince dot com sent me an email about it trying to get me to buy it. Of course I know. But um, but I love that people always like try to keep me abreast of what's going on with Prince. By the way, you know what I learned yesterday, which I didn't know? What? And I don't know if you knew this. Well, I'm sure you did. What? Obviously you did. Why am I even saying it? And no. You just said, don't do the thing. And then <laughs> no. I just did the fucking thing. But you know what's funny? Every once in a while, some piece of information will surprise me. I can tell you like something that did surprise me that escaped my notice before. But tell me what you learned yesterday. I learned that Autumn DeWild like, spent three days shooting him for the Montreal residency or whatever. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I did. Know I, that. I didn't, I didn't know that. And yes. like those pictures are fucking amazing. Yes. That's amazing. Here's the thing that I didn't really realize now. Okay. So you know that Wendy from Wendy, yes, Lisa from the revolution, you know, Wendy Melvoin yeah. mm -hmm. is course, like course. one of my heroes, one of my lifelong heroes. And I try to be chill about it. And I try to be chill about the fact that I live in Los Angeles now. And there may come a day when I run into her like in the store or something and I'm going to lose my fucking mind. <laughs> yeah. And like our friend Meredith Salinger, who's married to Patton Oswalt one time like um just mentioned that they're friends and like I almost ha I had a <laughs> laid down like I sh I just just her mentioning it like almost made me black out I don't know why but anyway anyway so um Wendy Melvoin I knew had sort of like dated Katie Lang at one point like they you know just casually and I remember seeing like pictures of them at the time like way back they had gone out a couple times what I didn't know what had escaped me ever knowing at the time is that the song Constant Craving is supposedly written about Wendy Melvoin that's what I've recently learned so you know oh, so there interesting. are things that somebody can like once in a while point out to me that I'm like, oh, I never heard that one. But, you know. It's very interesting. So don't um, stop telling me things, but, you know. <laughs> don't, but. Also, keep in mind that you don't need to tell Casey when it's Prince's birthday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, guys, we should really get to the interview because, again, this is might be a three-hour episode. And some people <laughs> love them. And then some people are like, I'm literally seven episodes behind because you keep doing yeah. episodes. And I get it. I get it. But also... This is just, it is what it is, guys. Yeah, Good for you that you're busy. We're just having a nice time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Good for you. Um, okay. We already talked about our guest, Natalie Morales. I really like Natalie. She told us a thing that we, I had no idea about. A pivot with, that I did not see coming. It was wild. Her pivot. That was wild. That was fucking wild. I was like truly horrified and shocked and had no idea. Yeah, talk about almost blacking out. I almost Oof. did. I know. Me too. Did you see me? I was like in a state. Yeah. Anyway, guys, listen to the interview. 
see how you feel about see it. See if you pass out. <laughs> athletic greens in your smoothie. Athletic greens every day. Replace your multivitamin man with a delicious scoop of athletic green. Okay. All right. That one just, that one fell off. But it, it got away from you. It got away from me. But here's the deal, guys. We often are truly running around. We're all like, we want to eat well. We want to get it all done. And it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to get the daily nutritional things that you need. The superfoods, the like probiotics, the multi-minerals, the multivitamins, all of the stuff, food sourced ingredients. It's hard. It's like a second job. Honestly. And this is where Athletic Greens can help. It is kind of life-changing. Their daily all-in-one superfood powder is a nutritional essential. It's by far the easiest and most delicious nutritional habit you can add to your daily routine and, you know, lead you toward better habits. They simplify the logistics of getting optimal nutrition on a daily basis by giving you just one thing that has all of the best things that your body wants and needs and honestly deserves. (laughs) So one tasty scoop of athletic greens you can add to your smoothies you can i mean do you do what do you do do you do a smoothie yeah just a smoothie in the morning because that's like something that i'm already doing anyway Mm -hmm. that's already my routine to like prepare a beverage in the morning so it's not even like altering the plan of my life i'm already making coffee making a smoothie in the morning can i tell you what i've done a few times too when i've like not had a smoothie i've added it to my celery juice oh great yeah Yeah, because it contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients, including a multivitamin, multimineral, probiotic, greens, superfood blend, and more. They all work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet. They increase energy and focus. They aid with digestion and support a healthy immune system, all without the need to take multiple products or pills. Anyway, guys... I because you know what I don't want to do stand around what? all morning opening one bottle two bottle three bottles Ugh. four bottles it like no. is just one thing in my cabinet that I take one yeah. scoop of you know listen here's the other thing I love about athletic greens that they obsessively improve this one holistic formula based on the latest research which means that Over the last decade and counting, they've produced 53 improvements to athletic greens. So like they're always, they're they're not just like satisfied with like, oh yeah, the product's good. It tastes good. People like it. And it's got the, it's like new research comes out. They're like, okay, how do we add this? How do we do this? You know, it's also lifestyle friendly, whether you're keto or paleo or vegan or dairy-free or gluten-free, and it contains less than one gram of sugar, and it does not compromise on taste. It tastes really good. So um, visit athleticgreens.com slash busy and join health experts, athletes, and health-conscious go-getters around the world who make a daily commitment to their health every day because Athletic Greens is doubling down on supporting your immune system They're offering our audience a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit our link today. You're going to basically never have to buy vitamin D again. So this this is like a great deal. So again, Simply visit athleticgreens.com slash busy and get your free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your purchase of Athletic Greens. And let us know how you feel. Let us know if you like it. Sakara is back. I'm so excited. I love Sakara. Yes. No joke. I've done Sakara for years, guys. You know it. You've heard me talk about it, haven't you? Have you not? Continue listening. I have. Even if you have, continue listening because then you're going to get like a special code and you might need a little reset. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I I need a reset. I'm going to do Sakara next week. We talked about all my issues last week going on, you know, 
And part of that is like digestion and what's like how I'm going. Yeah. And it's it's hasn't been great, turns out. Yeah, you just have to like achieve balance. And that is where Sakara really comes in handy. And the thing that I love about Sakara is that it, it's like it, do, it doesn't feel restrictive. That's like I hate like I don't like when people are like, oh, yeah, do this cleanse. You'll feel so amazing. Your digestion will be so good. I'm like, oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm I'm just drinking things <laughs> for six. I can't do that. I can't just drink stuff like I have to eat. What are you talking about? And Sakara believes in giving you more of what's good for you and it's really filling and you eat you eat the stuff it's chef crafted plant rich meals that are like an excellent foundation for just health yeah just eating good food that chefs made that chefs made for you it really helps my body feel so good it's not for me about weight loss or dropping pounds or anything. It's truly about like, oh, okay, I need a little bit of a reset. My body's not feeling great. I'm feeling a little slow and achy and my we all know what's happening in other places. Um, it is delivered fresh to your door anywhere in the United States, ready to eat breakfast, lunches, and dinners. And they change weekly. You never get bored. That for me is huge because I am just suffering. I don't know about all of you, but I'm suffering from like decision fatigue. I just yeah. can't choose another thing. So to have Sakara coming at me with all of these choices and suggestions is just a real, it's very helpful. And it's a great way to try like doing, you can do totally, you know, it's totally plant-based and you can choose to do just like a couple days a week where you're like, I'm going to, it's like better for the environment. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try this. It's better for your body. Anyway, along with the delicious plant-rich meals, Sakara also offers daily wellness essentials like supplements and herbal teas to support your nutrition. I really, really love their teas. Um, they have their best-selling metabolism super powder that's made with organic raw cacao that boosts energy, eliminates bloating, minimizes your sugar cravings, and reduces fatigue. I like their like raspberry tea. I drink that yeah. regularly in the afternoon. And right now, Sakara's offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash busy or enter code busy, B-U-S-Y, at checkout. That's Sakara S-A-K-A-R-A, sakara.com slash busy, and you'll get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash busy. What are you waiting for? Well, Plan B, which just came out last week on Hulu. Natalie, Look, this is just how we this is how we roll. All right, we've started. We've started recording. We like Natalie, a surprise start. Okay, okay. Natalie, we sort of just like like most things. Casey and I just sort of roll into it. Okay, you know, <laughs> great. And then we hope for the best. We cross our fingers. We hope for the best. Yeah, I didn't know if you know you were you were just practicing your presentational voice when you were talking about the movie being on Hulu, or if we. Do had you feel like started. that was a presentational <laughs> voice? Maybe it was. I feel like you just you have you have you know show host training, so you do it automatically. It's, it's I have a little uh, bit. I do have a little bit. Of yeah, show. I'm very uncomfortable in what is clearly Birdie's sweater right now, but we're gonna we're gonna power through. <laughs> you look good in it. Good thing this was a fucking podcast, Natalie. <laughs> isn't it great to wear your child's clothes? Like, isn't well, doesn't it feel a little good that you like fit in it and it's great and it looks good on you? Fit in it is generous <laughs> of you. But what is so funny is just that Birdie raids my closet on the regular and creates just the most intense looks. And I do think like a lot of times, you know, no matter who you are, your mom is an eye roll, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Sure. But there are a couple times when I get to look at Birdie and I'm like, come on though, right? Like it's pretty yeah. cool that I'm your mom. Anyway, let's get to you, Natalie. Plan Hi. B just came out last week. I loved it. Oh, thanks. Congratulations. It's, it's on Hulu. So good. It's so good. It's so good. Guys, you probably watched it this weekend, last weekend, but if you didn't, now's your chance. Yeah. Check it out. Um, and this is your directorial debut, 
But you've been, I feel like you've been dabbling in the directing for quite some time. Yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been somewhat confusing to talk about because I, this is not a humble brag. This is a, I don't know how this happened. It just happened thing. I, it's actually like half of my directorial debut because I did two movies at the same time last year. So uh, when I've been talking about this, it's been so weird because people are like, is language lessons your directorial debut or is this your directorial debut? And I guess by the word debut, it means one, one thing, (laughs) but it's, it's both. So we were supposed to do this movie in um, March of 2020. Uh, We were supposed to start in March. Right. So we did all the pre-production and we were gearing up to go. We were literally we got shut down the day before we started shooting, um, as of the whole world did, right? So then in the middle of lockdown, Mark Duplass uh, and I did like an experimental feature on our own, literally in lockdown, not knowing if it was going to go anywhere um, out of sheer boredom and depression. And then, uh, and then while I was editing that, we got called to go do plan B again. So I, I shot the Duplass thing in July. And and then I started shooting the um, plan B thing in September. Like we went back to do it in September. So they were really insanely simultaneously uh, simultaneous. And then language lessons, which is the name of that movie came out uh, in the festival run. It hasn't come out for the general public yet, but then it did the festival run and then plan B came out, but then language lessons comes out later for uh, the general. You do it. Listen, all we have to say debut. Yeah, it is. You and two very I haven't had a chance to see language lessons not, yet. No, not many people have. Yeah, no. But uh, I feel like they're not similar no. movies tonally. I mean, no, I just know not. I know you and Mark, and I know the bits that I've seen from from him and from yeah. what you've posted, and I feel like you couldn't have asked for two more disparate sort of. Yeah, they, they're very into the world of directing. They're very, they're very different. I will say, I, I realized only by doing press for both that they, actually what they have in common is that they're both movies about friendship, mm-hmm. um, but tonally they're very, very different. I, I again, not intentional, just happened, and it was bananas uh, and and great. I mean, I guess now people can't pigeonhole me as a director. I, they're <laughs> totally different. Um, well, I think it says a lot about you too, Natalie. And one of the things that I admire about you is that like, I just always admire your spirit. Like, I just always admire that you're always just doing something like you're just like, whenever I hear about what you're doing, it's always interesting and you never seem stuck in the way like you tell me if I'm wrong but I just always like how whenever I hear about what you're doing it's something new so I love that you're like oh we got shut down and so then like Mark Duplass and I we just made like a movie for like funsies and then you know and I love that that like I'm like oh I would have like um hid under my bed or whatever but you were like oh let's just do this wait Casey I'm so sorry I just have to interrupt because you and I did actually just do that when we got (laughs) shut down for the (laughs) pandemic I do just want to say you're it's very you're like I would have we did with us actually we did did, yeah we didn't have the now we didn't have the Natalie Morales listen it wouldn't even like take a pandemic to get me to hide under my (laughs) bed I think I I think my briefness was misleading because I also did do that um (laughs) I I did I just was trying to be brief in how I did it I mean yeah yeah when I said I shot it in July the pandemic happened in March so I I fully I fully you know watched all of the Sopranos and made all the banana bread and cried and cried and cried and had experienced major major loss and did a bunch of other things that were nothing you know and just hid in my bed or in my car a lot um there was a lot of just sitting in my car crying um, and it, it, I, I think I, I do tend to like create things when I'm depressed. It's like where I, where my brain starts to go to, but it was actually Mark who was like, Hey, do you speak Spanish? I have this weird idea. Let's do this. And, and, you know, it, it seemed like an e- easy, fast thing to do, which it was neither. Um, but <laughs> they never uh, are guys. No. <laughs> they just never are. Yeah. But it wasn't, I, I, I mean, I, I really thank you for seeing that spirit in me. And sometimes I do have that. I hate the feeling of being stuck, but it's certainly, that wasn't what I love being fucking lazy. I love it. And I <laughs> thrive in it. And I didn't get a chance to do it last year, but that's not my typical self. So, well, listen, yeah. you get in, in entertainment, we all know you get years where 
you know, you have to just go, go, go. And then you get yours where there's a lot of downtime. But I do think what Casey said is true. Just in thinking about your career as an actor first, I would say that you have been someone who I've always been interested in what you do next because you are one of very few actors that I know like of your age that sort of kind of just like go back and forth between like super dramatic, serious things, really broadly funny sitcoms and single camera shows and prestige dramas and like soapy dramas. You know what I mean? Like you Mm do, like you literally do, you've done it all in a, not a super long amount of time, I would say. Thank you. Right. Um, that, yeah. I mean, I think what you're, that's my dog taco barking at somebody. Taco. Hi, taco. Um, I think what you're uh, talking about is just me uh, being like a job. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> same. Uh, I mean, same. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, I mean, look, there has been some decision making that has gone into it, especially recently. I've been very fortunate in that, like, I, I, can be a little bit choosier with my job because I'm not terrified that I'll never get another one. Sure. And yeah, that was, yeah. that's only happened in like the last five years where I'm like, I think I'll, I think I'll get another job. I think, I think I might. So it's I've been able freeing, to say, yeah, it is moment. extremely freeing. You know, actually the, the fucking pandemic was really uh, enlightening with that because in our jobs, in any any kind of job in the entertainment industry where it's it's always so uncertain and you're like, there's no job security in what we do at all, right? But last year made me realize that there's no job security in any job, like in at anything. all. Yeah, for anyone. Nothing. For anyone. Nothing. And so it's like, fuck it, like just keep going and do what you want to do because yeah, yeah, job security so, is a myth. So at what point were you thinking... I want to do a feature. I want to direct a feature. Was that something that you always, that was a goal or is it just been sort of a thing that's built up as you've worked and you've seen how other people have worked and you've thought, well, these people are fucking idiots. I could do much better myself. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Oh, I'm just projecting. No, you're not. You're not. You're absolutely not. Um, You're absolutely not projecting. Um, No, actually, it was my first goal because I had written um, a feature script I'd been writing and... And I was like looking for directors because I did not, you know, believe in myself to do it, nor did I think I could, nor did I think anyone would let me. And then once I realized that, like, I want I wanted to direct the, own, the script that I had written and that what I needed to do is just get to the point where someone would let me do that. Um, then I started directing smaller and smaller and stuff so that I like I directed all my friends music videos. I have tons of friends and bands for free, you know, and then I did like funny or die stuff. And then I just started building it so that. I could one day direct my own feature. So that was always the goal. But it certainly, <laughs> I was I was talking to somebody yesterday who was like, do you have any advice for like y- y- people who want to direct and young filmmakers? And I was like, yeah, just like do it because I was, and e- even if it's bad, it's good because A, not only do you learn from it, but other people learn from your bad shit. And that is good because I learned so much from people who were terrible at it and was so inspired. I mean, I Truly. always have been. I always have been by uh, about anything in life of like, God, that person's doing the thing I want to do. Why am I scared to do it? They're doing it so terribly and they're doing fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that has been a major motivator for me in any arena in life, really. That's been my motto my entire life, by the way, Natalie, yeah. is um, stupider people than I have done this. Yes, me too. It's my Every major time. motivator. Yeah. 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 It's also something interesting that like Casey and I talked about in the very, very beginning of Busy Tonight when we were in the process of hiring, which was that like, you know, it's really hard for people to get breaks in this Mm -hmm. business. And at a certain point, Casey's like, it's not fucking rocket science. These people seem enthusiastic. They're creative. They're smart. Yeah. They're smart. They look cute. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kidding. She never said they look cute, but she did. (laughs) But she, you know, but she was like, well, let's give them that they want this job. They want to do this. Let's give them the shot. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But like, at least you're seeing someone for their possibility, their potential, as opposed to what they've, 
you know, what's on their resume. Especially because traditionally women and minorities don't get those opportunities. So they, they, if they had, if they had gotten those opportunities, their resumes would look like their white male counterparts, but they, they just don't. So it is, I'm so glad you guys did that because that's, that's exactly how I got a boost up is like somebody being like, I, I saw you did this music video and I like I, I did this music video for Andrew Bird and Mark Duplass saw that and was like, can you direct an episode of Room 104? And that's a huge fucking step up. Like, yeah, he, that made me get my into the DGA that like that chance of like, hey, maybe you'll fuck up this 30 minute weirdo episode of television, but I'm going to let you was like such an amazing risk that somebody took on me. Right. Um, yeah. And it's like it's and just, just like 10 music videos. Right. You know what I mean? And if you killed it in one music video, you can do you know, 10 music videos, probably, probably, probably. (laughs) But it also like still most of the time takes like a white dude. And we love Mark. We love, we love Mark Duplass. Yeah. But he's like, you know, a white dude who's like worked really hard to, you know, give other people shots. And thank goodness that that's how he chooses to wield his privilege. But there are so many other I was going to say that's Dudes. one thing that like he he would say right about himself. That's one of the things like when he came on Busy Tonight, that was like this one of the Casey's things, favorite thing ever. He, when one of the things that he like said, like that was what he wanted to talk about is like when he came on Busy Tonight, he wanted to talk about how when he and his wife got married, they made a pact that they were going to divide everything equally because they both had careers and how if they were going to have a family, everything was going to be split 50-50. And then he was just like, I just want to go on record and say that's not what happened because mm-hmm. that's not the way it works and it's fucking bullshit. Interesting. So, you know, mm-hmm. for him to like just be like, that's the truth of it or whatever that to me says that like, listen, I'm a person that like sees the reality of the situation. And so like, I'm going to do what I can to make it right. So I have, I have a lot of respect for him. I love him. Yeah, I do too. I mean, listen, when, when I, when I did join the DGA, which is the director's guild, um, they made me do like a first time TV director's course, which I was like, ugh, this is going to suck, <laughs> right? And it was like a two day long, like two day, what, for, like, all day safety? long. What for no, like safety? What do they I don't know, right? It actually was incredible and I learned so much and it was three different, very, very prolific TV directors telling you how, tips, tricks, how they did it, what to expect on a set. What, when did what, that start? I didn't get that. That started literally when I did Room 104, which was, uh, I don't know, four years ago or something wow. like that. Yeah, um, it was- and it was great. It, like they Down to like, these are the sneakers I think you should wear that are the most comfortable. But what was amazing about it was there was, there was um, yeah, all, all three directors had totally different styles of doing things and were like telling you what their style was. But the, the key thing of it is that there was maybe um, 12 people in that class and seven of them were for Room 104, were Mark, and were women or gay men. <laughs> and, That's amazing. And, uh, and I was like, and, and by the way, the only women. Like, we were, it was amazing. Like, and the rest were white men. They were all for this one show. And it right. was so cool to see. So, yes, definitely, I respect that a lot. Um, so when that movie comes out, Mm-hmm. We'll have we'll have Mark on and we'll talk yes. about how wonderful you are. You should. But let's talk about Plan B. Okay. Because very timely. Yeah. For this movie to come out right now, I think it's super important. Do you want to give our listeners who maybe haven't seen it what the elevator elevator pitch? Whatever. Sure. Just give us sure. like a, the quick thing if you're not too tired Yeah. Of no, it. no. It's um so it's it's about two teenage girls uh, who live in South Dakota, um, uh, and they're sort of dorky and uh, and you know and but they're best friends and they have a party and um, one of them loses their virginity and the next morning pees out the condom. So uh, they go to their pharmacy to get uh, the Plan B pill, but um, in South Dakota, like in many many other states. Um, there's something called a conscience clause and mm-hmm. it uh, allows pharmacists to deny people contraceptives if it goes against their beliefs. So in this small town that they live in, it's the only pharmacy and everybody around there is very conservative and feels the same way. So they get their asses to the one Planned Parenthood across the state. Um, and that all sounds sort of like serious, but the movie is an R-rated comedy and it's uh, like the teenage... I was, su- 
I was shocked by some things. I'm not going to lie. Natalie, <laughs> that was I was my goal. Like, I was like, I feel like Birdie, maybe maybe this, maybe my 13-year-old can watch it. And then I was like, no, I'm not ready for that. Nope, no. I'm not ready. <laughs> no, no, no I, ma'am. I feel mm-hmm. like it's, I'm I mean, not it's, ready. yeah, it's a hard R. Uh, it, it, it's a I, hard R. I wanted, I wanted, you know, girls and especially women of color who are the leads of this movie um, to have that because like, I grew up with that, you know, I grew up with like super bad and American pie and, yes. and like, uh, I mean, super bad. I was already a little bit older, but it was like, um, you know, even like Ferris Bueller, like all, all these teen movies that always had this quest that were always led by boys and white yes. boys at the, at the thing. And, and this is exactly the same as that in that it's a teen quest movie, but instead of like getting alcohol for the party or getting the girl or losing your virginity or getting your dad's car back. It's getting basic health care. But <clears throat> everything else that happens in the movie <laughs> is just as like wild and crazy because girls' lives are like that. Like teenage girls are just as horny and just as crazy and just as wild and just as bold. And I was really excited to do that for once, you know? Yeah. I really loved that there wasn't I loved that all the the kids are basically good in the yeah. in the movie. All the kids are, you know, I, I mean, they're all different. They're all different kinds of kids and they're all kind of kids that you feel like you know or that you knew when you were in school. I was in school yeah. a really long time ago, <clears throat> but they're all basically like good kids, you know, and yeah. and just trying to find their way and doing like fucked up stuff and I really loved like for me personally like I would have loved so much a movie that said like yeah sometimes you make like kind of a fucked up big mistake and then like you go on a quest to like deal with that mistake and like then life goes on you know what I mean? Unexpected things happen. Yeah. Yeah and also I mean for sure that is part of the reason why I made it. I also wanted kids and and also you know people who used to be teenagers and parents to watch this and go like yeah this is the kind of friend i deserve this is the kind of parenting i deserve this is what the kind of guy i deserve this is the kind of relationship this kind of understanding i deserve like just because i am who i am or i made the mistakes that i made doesn't mean that i'm not deserving of like love and acceptance and happiness in my life you know yeah and just because you happen to have been born or moved to a certain state doesn't mean that your rights should be less than right. people in other states and that your agency should be taken away from you. Right. I mean, did you watch that? The girl's, um, I don't know her name. Her acceptance speech. Her, yeah. Her, like valedictorian Texas, speech. The valedictorian. I did in see Texas. it. I, I did see it. It was so, I mean, when I was a kid, I remember, um, I wasn't the valedictorian, but I remember only wanting to be the valedictorian in order to get the platform to give some sort of like raising speech that like threw bombs on the ground. <laughs> Cause I <laughs> always like looked for, like, I loved that as a kid. I loved, I love anything that gives a child a platform because nine times out of 10, it's amazing. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and I love that. And I loved that she was as bold to do that, you know? It's yeah. incredible. And it's also, Here's the thing, as a parent, and we're all, you know, older now, Natalie, <laughs> even you, you're yeah, not, I'm, I'm you know, you're, I know, you're younger, but still older. Yeah, no, I'm um, still <laughs> I get so, I get so bummed when people continue to say like, we just, we're going to wait, all the old white men are going to die or all the, just, no, we're just making wait more. I mean, well, first of all, we're making more, but secondly, it's like, we can't wait for these kids to save our lives. They're trying their fucking hardest. They're banging the drum at every chance they get. We have to show the fuck up for them. Yeah. Anyway, I do love anytime there's a, I don't know, something there, there's a, there's a sort of subversive and or very blatant message, but it's kind of like wrapped up in a lot of insanity and yeah penis I mean, that's, rings yeah you know it's, just it's, like <laughs> it's it's uh the sugar with your medicine you know and, and also like who wants to be preached at that's not what I wanted to do like I, I didn't want to preach to the choir and I didn't want to preach to the congregation either I just wanted to show you how things are and that's enough like that is mm-hmm. enough uh that gets the point across to me you know yeah would you say that like directing is your biggest pivot or do you feel what do you, do you feel like you have, 
a moment in your life where things took the left turn when you thought they were going to go? I mean, you know, honestly, that moment might be now, (laughs) might be right Right. now. Um, But up until, you know, to sort of take a bird's eye view, there's been a lot of those, you know, like I moving to L.A. was a really big one. I, I, you know, I come from I'm a I'm an only child um, with a really tight knit family. I was raised by a single mom. And like, I mean, we're they're all my whole family are refugees. We're really poor. So we stuck together. We lived in like I I slept in a I, I lived in a converted one car garage with my mom most of my life. So leaving her and leaving my family was a very big deal for them (laughs) and for me, but like a really, you just, by the way, in Cuban households, you don't do that. You just don't, you just never leave your family. But in, in this particular very like close knit, like all we have is each other because everything else we left behind, it was really, really difficult. And also, um, You know, I mean, I did have a lot more bravado when I was younger, but I I was just like, I knew I had to. There was just something inside me that was like, I have to not live this life. Like, I have to, I have to change everything. Um, So that was, I mean, that was an early on pivot. I was 20, but it was, it was a big deal. Um, It's all the way across the, the country. Um, I still remember my mother sobbing at the airport and like my whole family sobbing and, and, and being so scared that I, you know, that I would leave. I had to, I was forced to call my mother three times a day, every day for like the first seven <laughs> years that I lived here. Oh and then I God. finally got it down to once a day. We're at once a day now. Um, <laughs> still holding strong. Holding once strong. A day. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I introduced her to Marco Polo, which has helped some too. <laughs> Because I'm like, sometimes I'm a little too busy, mom. You know um, what my mom said about Marco Polo? She was like, I don't like it busy. I don't want to talk to myself. I want to talk to you. And I'm like, oh, OK, fine. I guess we're not doing it. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, you know, I had I guess I had something that really that really did change my life that I could see changing my life when it happened. And I've, t- I've talked about this before, but not in this way. So when I lived in New York, because um, I was doing the show White Collar, Um, we had finished a season and I was moving back to LA just for like the year or whatever until we went back again. And right before I was going to move, this girl that I had just met was like, Hey, do you want to come to the opera? I have an extra ticket. And I was like, I've never been to the opera. How fancy this sounds great. And so I went to the Met and, um, sort of halfway through the first act, or sorry, in the intermi- the first intermission, I was walking down the stairs um, because her parents were at the bottom of the stairs and she was like, do you want to meet my parents? They're sitting down there. And I tripped and I fell uh, 20 steps and I landed face first on the balcony wall and I broke <gasps> my face. <laughs> and What? <laughs> yeah, oh and I couldn't... Uh, I couldn't see. And when I talked, all that happened was blood. Like I couldn't see for like a good 15 minutes. Um, I thought I was blind. Um, I remember literally my first thought was I, it was that thing where I hit the wall so hard. You know that, you know that thing that happens in, oh no, at least I didn't go over the balcony. I really can't. That's true. This is so terrifying to me. Oh yeah. This is like my nightmare in life. Same, by the way, same. Um, I, I, I hit the wall. That thing happened where like, it sometimes happens in movies, but it does happen in real life where you hit your head so hard that all you hear is like, you can't hear anything else. Yes. And I try. I felt like hands on me. I couldn't see. I tried to speak and nothing but blood came out. And my first thought was, I guess I'll be a writer. Like that was literally <laughs> oh, what happened because oh I thought my face was missing. Like I literally oh, was like, I don't have but, a face. But also, by the way, I love that you didn't. My, I do feel like my first thought would be like, I'm about to die. I knew I wasn't dying. I knew I was still alive, but I thought I, I was like, I don't have eyes and I can't, oh, I can't my speak God. and I, and I, and my face is gone. Um, what ended up happening was I literally broke like my all, shattered, like to dust every single bone in my nose and my cheeks and stuff. Right. Like dust. Right. Natalie, I, this is insane. <laughs> oh, I know. I had to be like uh, wheeled out. I stopped the whole opera. <laughs> I had to be wheeled out of there. But uh, my my favorite part of this it was it was oh this, my god <laughs> it was this opera called Turandot, which I still don't know how it ends. By the way, 
Um, oh my god! <laughs> and and I I was I was like carted out of there. And I guess what happened is like shock blindness when you hit your head really hard, your eyes just stop fucking working. Sure. And I finally was able to see like when I was like blinking my eyes open, and I was you know with the neck thing. Also, everybody thought I broke my neck because I hit the <gasps> Holy thing so hard. Oh I did it. Thank God, I didn't. But I was all strapped in. And um, and on this stretcher backstage, and this uh, the first thing I see is a guy in like a full samurai costume just staring at me, and I was like, "Oh the my fuck god, are you looking at?" <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, oh, I had to have god. like emergency reconstruction surgery because I literally had there was like just nothing there. Oh my god. Um, how did you know that the plastic surgeon that they were bringing in was good? I didn't. So the guy at the ER was like, um, I was there all night and he was like, oh, by the way, <laughs> the worst part of this is that because I was bleeding like crazy, once they let me go, all I had was just <gasps> blood red stains on my crotch uh, of my clothes and the pants that I was wearing just from my nose and my mouth. But I had to walk, leave the hospital with a huge blood stain just on my crotch. Oh my um, god! Anyway, oh my god! Uh, they couldn't have given you like a pair of shorts. No, I mean I guess it's normal in New York, right? Like you've seen worse. But the people, the guy at the ER was like, "You don't want us to do this. You you don't want us to do this. I would suggest you get you call every surgeon in town and get an emergency appointment like tomorrow or the day after. If not, it's going to get much much worse. But you you don't want anyone at this ER to do it." Like it was like St. Vincent's or something. And I was like, right. Okay. So I left not being able to breathe, like not oh barely being able to see. Oh my God. And I did. And I did. I called somebody. My, my friend had actually broken his nose directing an episode of Gossip Girl at the Met Museum. No. <laughs> and he, yeah. And Why he, is culture so dangerous? I don't know. But he had just had that. So I was like, who was your surgeon? And she got me in. Um, but I didn't have like any pictures or anything. So she just kind of, she was like, look, this is rocks in space. I'm just making you a, a hole that you can breathe through. Maybe um, you're going to have to have more surgery eventually um, to fix what I'm doing. So anyway, after that happened, um, my face was different like, and my voice was different. And also, it took about a year to heal, and, and it was like a, a lava lamp for a year. It just was like shifting shapes because all the bones were healing. And um, Like, would you sleep at night and then wake up and be like, ugh, my nose is flat today? Yes. And also, no. every day for a year, I would look in the mirror and be like, what's the fucking point of makeup or clothes? Because I hate the way I look. This is not me. Like, I didn't have my own face. So I was oh like, my God. I, 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 it was a year of like severe depression because yes. I had no control wow. over my own face. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. And, and, um, and it's, it was my livelihood at the time. Right. And I'm not saying it like turned me into some Quasimodo thing, but like, I also just didn't um, look yeah. like me. You didn't um, want to move into the basement of the opera. <laughs> I mean, I should have, right? I should have like haunted that whole place. You literally, you literally were like the phantom of the opera. I, I, I should be. I should be. By the way, it was their their railing was wobbly, and that's what no. propelled me forward. But oh I couldn't God. sue them for the medical charges because they're a historical building and they were exempt. So I got screwed. I paid. Are you like, kidding? No, it was like it, that night cost me like a hundred thousand dollars. Um, oh out my. of my pocket. Well, easily, right? Yeah. Like that's the thing about that's so fucked. That's not. Yeah, and that's not even considering everything. Also, else by the way, come on, opera. Yeah, fucking cough it up. Yeah, we know so, how much money you're raking in. I'm teasing. <laughs> yeah, opera. <laughs> yeah, are. I don't think they are. I don't. Maybe they are. Are they? Um, I don't know. But so know. what a what a strange year. So this is not probably this pandemic hasn't even probably been the strangest year that of was, your life. What's crazy is that that was exactly that was 2010. So it was exactly 10 years ago. Um, and and so I I was on this show and then we they were like, you've been let go from the show. Um, oh, my God. And didn't tell me why, um, although I felt like I knew and how then can, I didn't yeah, get. Yeah, how can they say like? Yeah, and then I didn't get. Um, I didn't get jobs for a while, and I don't know if it was the way my face looked or my own insecurity about the way I looked or whatever. But it really pivoted things for me in this way that I was like, uh, okay, I have to just kind of deal with, um, you know, 
I have to be whatever this new person is because that's who I am now. And like, I just have to live in this space and figure it out. And, um, and then I just started building back up and doing smaller guest star roles again and then, and then getting more work that way. So, okay. Now I'm like obsessed and I'm looking at pictures of you. I'm Googling because I literally had no idea. I've known you for a long time and I've like, I think I met, met you, you after. I must have met you after. Yeah. So I so I just Googled you in 2009. There's a Pinterest page. Oh um, my God. <laughs> wait, is this your is this your old face? Yep, that's my old face. Yeah. I mean, it's not too far off from I'll show me. you. It's 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 it um, is? it's it's not if you like from the front, it's not crazy different from the side. It's I mean, I have a much uh, the cheeks are not as different as they were. My upper lip is totally different. And my nose is like, it was a bigger, like, uh, st- uh, a thinner nose. And now it's wider and flatter. Um, I'm sure, by the way, I'm sure to you, it's so much more noticeable yes, than yes. it would be. Oh, I mean, of course. But, but also if you, I, I was watching, um, this show, the middleman, that was the first show that I did the other day with somebody who really wanted to see it, who had never seen it and was like, Oh my God, every scene he was like, what, how is it that you, you look so insanely different. And I was like, I know I keep telling people, but I, you know, it is more obvious to me. I'm sure I'll send you some pics busy. I'll send you some. Pics okay. Of like- I, Cause I, I, this is like, this is truly wild. I, I've thought about this a lot. I fell holding birdie when oh they were God. a baby and protected birdie and smashed my face this is so crazy into a very strong waitress's leg <laughs> <laughs> so it was not a wall not basically a human balcony it yeah. was a, no no i mean pro- <laughs> honestly maybe the force that natalie flew with but definitely the landing a, softer, a little softer landing, was a little yeah. bit softer but still tough yeah still, still tough a, still a hard muscle. and i did I did break my nose, but it was when I was on Cougar Town and I had to fly back from Arizona. I was in Arizona. I had to fly back from Arizona on Southwest. They were giving me ice to put on my nose. I had a baby with me. It was insane by myself. And then I (laughs) I have the story of moving back to L.A. like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. And then I went to my ENT immediately like as soon as I landed and he was like okay here's the plastic person you can go to but you know you've got the good you've got the good cartilage and like so cartilage can either bend like a tree you know like a wet tree like Mm -hmm. a branch or it can snap and mine mine bent and so then they just like sort of bent it back and it was great you I have know. a fantastic nose. It was gr- thank you. I you love have, my nose. You have a great nose. Thanks, but I'm trying I to find also, a good picture. I'll send you one. But later. then I was like, but I did have that moment where I was like, what if this changes my face forever? Will I? How will I deal with that? What I is know. it even like? I couldn't even comprehend it. So to have that happen, especially like at the beginning of your acting yeah. career, essentially. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was 25. Um, I mean, yeah, you're so young. And I mean, like, needless to say, you're a very beautiful woman. Thanks. <laughs> but that it, it's it's not even a question of that. It's like a question of identity at a time. Yeah, like that's when what you're, it was. It's identity. It, when your yeah, identity I, is forming. Exactly. Right. I knew that objectively it wasn't like I was like, you know, marred and made would be made fun of for my face forever. Right. You know, I knew that. It just wasn't me. It wasn't something I chose and it wasn't right. something I wanted. So it just was a different face. And then like after it healed, I did what she said and I made an appointment with the top three like plastic nose surgeons in LA because I also still can't breathe through my nose well. It's like breathing through coffee stirrers. I, like, I couldn't, <laughs> I, I, I really couldn't. I can't hike. I get like, I like pass out. <laughs> what do they even do? But what do they even do for that? So because they, it's, that's what I said. I was like, I would like my old nose back if possible, but mostly I would like to breathe. And, and the first guy was like, um, so this is, I have to take a piece of your rib out and put it in your nose. It's going to take about a year to heal. It's a very Jesus, complicated surgery. Like biblical. It's really bad. The second guy was like, um, no, I'm not touching you. It's too, uh, it's too crazy. And I'm, I, I can't, I, I, with like 
my doctor's license cannot touch your face. And the third guy was like, yeah, easy, no problem. So I did nothing because I was too scared. I did nothing. It's still the same. Uh, I, I've done nothing. Did you Gosh. ever see, because I had sinus surgery, sinus, sinus surgery. Did you ever see a sinus surgeon? I didn't. I literally never did anything. I, that was the oh last time I stepped into I wonder, and, yeah. I wonder if you go see a, like an action, not a plastic, but, but someone a sinus who, surgeon. Yeah, maybe. Who I could look know. at it? Because I feel like that might be, might be the move. Maybe. Can I can I ask you a question? Do you have yes. a, do you have the hardest time sleeping? Is it so hard to is No, it, it's you... better now. Um I did for a while. It's better now. I think my body's like more used to it. Um but it was it was it was hard for a while. I I, oh my I gosh. yeah. <laughs> I'm so I feel so I'm like I feel like I'm touching my own I know. nose <laughs> listening to you so much. I have I have like basically no nose bone through no accident. Like it's just I'm just like that. Like I have a really short nose bone. And all of my cartilage is so soft in my body. Again, through no, like just that's just how I was born. Like I can't even keep a mask on my face because my ears are so soft. It just like flies off. Oh my God, off that's, so, my, that's actually my, so cute. <laughs> but my nose is also so soft that it just kind of like collapses over the course of the night and I can't breathe. So oh. I literally have this. This is so gross. But I'm just telling you, Natalie, in case it helps because okay, it's such great. a cheap fix. Yes. Um, I have this like weird device that looks like almost like a nose plug that you put on your nose to go swimming. Like but to breathe like, right. Yes. But it's like a hard, two hard little plastic cones that are attached. Oh, that, that open like, your nostrils. I, yes. That I stick up my nose so that my nose stays open so that I can breathe. Yeah. The no, they don't. My nostrils don't collapse, but it's still just small. It's all. Oh my God. Thank there. God. All... I feel I'm like, I'm just like breathing yeah. for you right now. I love it. Like your, your ears are like little lamb ears that can support a mask. <laughs> they're so soft and beautiful that they're like, I love it's so cute. It's truly pitiful, but I'm like, I just I my heart is going out to you because like anyone that has I mean any I'm type fine. Of- I'm fine, but it was it was a pivot for sure because I was like, but you were like literally at an age where like if someone got like bad bangs, it would send them (laughs) into a spiral for a month until they grew out. So like I'm like my heart is just I yeah, I wonder in that year when you were like sort of trying to wrap your face around your new face. (laughs) um, Did you start to write more? Did you start? How did it? Yeah, okay, so I did. I did. And, I did. And so how did that, how did it, like, tell us the the silver line. Tell us the bright That spot. was, yeah, that was the year I started directing music videos and, and um, started directing more because I wasn't getting work. And, and also, by the way, neither were... Um, my like really talented brown friends were not getting cast in shit that I knew that they could do. And, and so I was like, I want to put people in things and I want to make stuff for us, even if it's not for anybody else. And so, um, yeah, that is, that's the year I started directing music videos and doing stuff because, um, a, I didn't know if I was going to be working as an actor anymore. And, and B, I was like, I have to, I have to, I have to like accept that this is what my life is, which is fine. It's so much better than it could have been in so many fucking ways, right? Of course. Um, yeah. And so I'm like, all right, like I, I have to get. A, I stopped looking at myself in the mirror because for a while, because it literally depressed me because I could, did not recognize the person. Um, and then, and then, you know, once it stopped hurting, which really was like a year. I always talk about like for the first like six months. Sneezing was the most painful oh, fucking thing gosh. on the planet. And then after that, sneezing was orgasmic. It was like, <laughs> it was the best feeling on the planet. And once I got to that stage where I wasn't in pain all the time and I was like, whatever, fuck it. This is my fucking face and I'm going to just keep doing what I'm doing. It, it, you know, I think part of it also, it helped because I, I, as an actor, I think it's, it can be such a trap of like, wanting to look a certain way or feeling like you need to look a certain way in order to get work or to be seen for things or to be considered for things. And I just stopped fucking caring. Like I was like, well, that's, I see. I also think that's the, that's why you started working more and more. Probably. Is the, is once you, I, everybody I know who is an actor performer, once they really embrace and accept who they are, not 
what they think other people want to see them be or yeah. look like or whatever, that's when the career stuff yeah. happens. Yeah. And so maybe it's like, I mean, it's interesting because it, it's like a pivot that had you build up another skill set, which, uh, you know, which you always were interested in, wanted to do anyway, yeah. while you like got more comfortable with your new self. Yeah. And then you were able to like have confidence and go back and like you do every, you literally can do everything now, Natalie. Yeah. Yeah. I Thank mean, God so you, you broke your face. Just everybody break your face and you'll be fine. You'll, <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll start directing. I mean, what was the experience like? Cause I know you directed, well, both of your f- first features during the pandemic, but yeah. the Mar- let's not talk about the Mark movie. Cause that's just like you guys. And that's a whole yeah. different experience. This is like a big comedy with lots of teenagers and lots of set pieces and mm-hmm. lots of things happening. First of all, how long did you have to shoot the movie? Um, I think we had five weeks. It's not a long time. It. No, it's really not. <laughs> Especially, <laughs> by the way, with COVID protocols, um, everything, A, takes longer because there's only a certain amount of people allowed on set. There's only mm-hmm. certain, everybody has to wear masks and shields and the actors have to get touched. It's a whole thing. And But also another part of the protocol is that we could not go over 10-hour uh, days. Yeah, same. Um, which we have is, that on Girls 5 Ever. Which is not normal for for movies. Uh, not that I'm a person that what, likes to keep people there for 16 hours, but the hard cutoff at 10 makes it very, very hard to, to shoot. Yeah, we had like we had a thing on Girls 5 Ever where we... By the way, I the act- fucking love the show. Thank just letting you know. You know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, we were allowed to work 12 hours, I think. But like everybody else on the crew so at a certain point because you guys got there early for hair and makeup and stuff yeah Yeah. but at a certain point like somebody would come over and I'd be like I've never seen this hair person before oh hi nice to meet you okay sure you know like because you know they would always tell us they were leaving I'm making it sound like they would just disappear but yeah they would have to they would have to leave set two hours before we Oh, went. we did not have that. I mean, it was really indie sort of run and gun. We we just shut down. Like, we just would stop. And and, and so, wait, where did you shoot it? In Syracuse. Oh, oh wow. and yeah. number, wait, it was not good up there. It actually was better there than it was here at the time uh, when oh, okay. we shot. It was much, much better there. And, and the protocols that they put in place, we were like one of the first productions I knew of that was going back. And I was so terrified because... I mean, I was terrified for myself, but I was also in in the position of being a director. I was like, I feel responsible for the cast and crew here. And I don't want to do this if, I mean, I am and I'm not because I'm not the producer, right? Like I'm not the person paying for this shit and like setting it up, but everyone's going to look at me like I am. Mm -hmm. And I, by the way, do feel responsible. Like I want to make sure everybody's okay. And I know that in that position, people listen to me. So I have to take advantage. young people. Yeah, yeah. And and I knew that there was going to be scenes with background actors. Yeah. And it it was like, I was like, how the fuck are we going to do this safely? Because I don't want anybody to ever... Like, how are we going to have fun making a movie if people feel know, in right. fear? And that was the first time, you know, nobody nobody had done anything up until that point. So I was really thankful that they had this system up there where they they had the PCR tests and yes. they had they had the machines that would give us the answers to those in ten minutes. So it was not yeah. the rapid tests, and everybody was getting those constantly. And so it actually felt the safest on set uh, than it did anywhere else at that time. And nobody mm-hmm. on our set even got like a cold. Um, the whole time. So it was it was actually really great. It was not easy, but it was great. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, the young actors that you cast were incredible. I really I loved them. They're amazing. Um, they Everybody amazing. was incredible. Everybody's great Edie. in the movie. Edie, our friend I know. Edie. Edie's, Edie is... Really makes an impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Edie, Edie's like... Edie has this whole run in the movie... That if you saw at the gas yeah. station, that yeah. was like at the end of the night at like 5 a.m. Um, and it was just her improvising. And literally everybody, one person actually pissed their pants. And no. uh, yes, no. and was like, <laughs> came up to me and was like, I have to, I have to go home. I pissed my oh. pants. And I was like, oh. go ahead, go home. <laughs> like, she amazing. had us all laughing so much. Edie's just incredible. I mean, so many of the people. Moses Storm was also, like, unbelievable. But um, everybody, it, I got really, really lucky in that, like, we had so much fun. And it was, it was everybody was, like, had this shared goal of making this yeah. awesome 
thing with like a lot of heart and a lot of raunch. And, um, and it was really just a fantastic experience. It's so fantastic. Yeah. And I don't want to ruin the end of the movie, but I really personally loved, loved, deeply loved the ending oh, good. of the yeah. film. So um, yeah. you guys, I really Thanks. want everybody to watch it. Yeah, Thank I want you. everybody to watch it. And since I'm like, I feel like I'm the, I'm always like the mom, the older mom voice here. Here's what I'm going to say to, because I know a lot of moms listen to the podcast. So here's what I'm going to say. Moms, you should definitely watch this. But not with your kids. <laughs> not with your kids, maybe. And also, like, but, like, also, maybe just let your kids watch it and let them think that they're, like, watching it kind of, like, behind your back and, like, watching, like, a cool subversive thing that, you know, maybe you don't have to, like, have this big, huge talk about it unless they want to. Like, maybe just let them watch it and enjoy it and think it's cool and take it in. And if they want to talk to you about it, awesome. But, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just let them let them I think have that's good this. advice. Let them have good this. advice. Let yeah. them have this. I agree. But but also you should watch it because it's really great and it will make you laugh and it will make you feel like you are 16 again and it will make you wish that you had a movie like this when you were 16. Um, it's the movie that we all deserved when we were 16. So I'm so happy that it exists now. Thank you. Oh man, that makes me feel happy. Yeah, I mean, I did. I made it. I made it for, you know, people our age. I made it for teenagers. I feel like it's, you know... For people who used to be teenagers, for parents, for teenagers <laughs> now, I, I definitely. I mean, there's jokes in there that are not the kids will not understand. No. <laughs> um, well, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. Like when I watched it, I was like, I know Birdie is gonna find this film, but like some of it, I was like, they're not even gonna understand what that yeah. is. So it's fine. Like I'm yeah. fine. It'll be fine. I don't want to sit with them while they watch it. Yes, exactly. If they, if they find it, okay. Well, well, you know. Yeah, I think it has, you know, it has all good messages buried all under there. So I'm excited. I think yeah. it does. I mean, it genuinely does. Like Casey yeah. said, like, uh, you know, all the kids are are good, have good motivations. Yeah. You know, and they're they're trying. They're trying. Oh, like the name of our podcast, guys. They're trying their best. <laughs> oh, they're yeah. trying their best. They are. And it's also it's also a really it's. It's the most important thing that I wish someone had told me again at that age that like one choice that you make one night at one party doesn't say anything about who you are for yeah, your it entire you. life. It yeah. doesn't define you. It's not your it's not your personality, it's not your character, it's nothing. You know yeah. what I mean? And you don't and, need to take it on as that. Right. Exactly. Ugh, I wish someone exactly. had told me that. Yeah. And yeah. And and so and and the kids in the movie have so much wisdom, at, which is like also really remarkable because kids really can be super wise if yeah. people are willing to listen to what kids have to say. So I was really happy that the kids were written that way. That was that was also That's pretty good. wonderful. That makes me happy. Natalie, what's next? You're are you currently filming uh, Dead to Me? I can't you tell done? you that. Oh, busy. sorry. I can't. Well, it says <laughs> close we know that you're on it. <laughs> but uh, I think they're well, so anyway. secretive about about it over okay, there. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I can't speak about that. <laughs> okay, don't speak about it. Don't, don't want to get it. you in trouble. I was like, cons- I'm like constantly getting in trouble with everyone because I'm like, I mean, they say not to talk about it, but really, who cares? Yeah, I know. Um, it turns out they do. It actually, they really do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well. Anyway, yeah. but so what are you looking for more? What it, what happened to the first feature you wrote for yourself to direct? Where's that? You know, I wrote it for myself to star in it and I aged out of it. So now I, 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 I hope I get to make it at some point, but I'm, I'm do writing. You still, does it still like hold up? Do you still want to make it? I do. I do. I do. I, I've also written to a, a lot of other things since then. So like I, there's other stuff that somehow, even though I always thought that was going to be the priority, there's other stuff that have, has like, you know, it feels more, um, more me now. And so I don't know, I'm, I'm writing this movie with my best friend right now for, um, for universal. So we'll see what happens. And then after that, I'm taking a fucking vacation and doing nothing. I just, yeah, that sounds, that sounds, that That sounds sounds really nice. I want to not be needed 
and just <laughs> sit somewhere. You're That's like the boy that I'm looking forward to now <laughs> yeah, is a beach. Just nothing. <laughs> yeah. I do um, want to ask you about one other pivot because um when you were a guest on Busy Tonight, we talked about one of another big dream that you had in your life that I we helped you Oh um, animal animal wrangler. To be in to be an animal handler <laughs> that yeah. we tried to help you make come true. And I think you did really good at it. I think you were uh, like Thank you. You, you know, you even got to handle, wrangle Marcel the monkey from You know, Friends. I feel like every animal sanctuary that has a monkey is like, this is the monkey from Friends. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't actually, you know. Just as they, long as it's like an cause elderly monkey in a diaper. <laughs> yeah, I've been to more than one and they're like, this is Marcel. And I'm like, uh, I feel like Marcel died. Maybe, he did die. But, yeah. <laughs> did he? Well, yeah, after... but no, but but after busy tonight. Was it? Okay. Well, yeah. maybe that was not Marcel. your fault. Not your fault. No, not Natalie. my fault. Natalie, not my fault. Yeah. did you kill Marcel? <laughs> oh, the God. <laughs> from friends? I should have been a part of that special. <laughs> oh my gosh. But um, where are you on your on your animal wrangling dream? You know, I I I, I feel like Next time you guys have uh, an opportunity for that, I'm still your your correspondent in that field. Okay, um, I will come on at any show you have anytime, and I will be that person for you. No one else has given me talk about giving people opportunities. Nobody else has given me that opportunity except for you guys. Um, so, well, there was a lot of animal uh, wellness and welfare, and a lot, a lot of things taken into consider. It's a lot to get it all done. So yes. maybe that's yeah. why, you know. And you were other, really good yeah. at it. You were Thank really you. a Thank caring you. steward of all those well cared for animal guests. And I would, uh, I I would just, like to have like a sanctuary of my own someday. And like, you should just, take you need to animals. team, team up with Whitney Cummings and you guys can <laughs> open a sanctuary for animals. Do you, do you know about animal tracks? Here? I love animal tracks. Um, <laughs> I, I love I love it um, there, but I just heard they have to move and they're what's, um, what's animal tracks? I don't know about that. Animal this, tracks is this animal sanctuary. Yeah, they have monkeys, they have all sorts of stuff, and it's all rescued animals. And you go there and they have like experiences with the animals, but because of COVID, they couldn't have right. uh, guests. And then also, right. there's a new like zoning law that is making them move everything. So they're like, if they've been asking for donations because they like they have no money, and right. they're great. They're so great. They have all these like old weird animals and they're so great. <laughs> they're like, um, that's my, before COVID, I got like my husband, a gift was like a gift certificate to go like hug foxes or whatever yeah, there. And we yeah. haven't been able to use it, no. but it's always on my mind because I'm in like the local buy nothing group. Do you know what that is? Like I've on, heard about that. Yeah. And there's a lady in my buy nothing group that works at animal tracks and she'll always be like, does anybody have like a lawnmower wheel? Because I'm trying to <laughs> um, build a walker for a uh, one legged oh penguin. My <laughs> oh my God. That's so cute. You should call that them is... and see if they'll take a private appointment at this point. I know. Why would it? They should. I, I bet yeah, they do. I don't, I don't know well, if they have yet, but they're they're great. I really like them a lot. Um, we'll that's see. super exciting. I did just have an idea that I feel like maybe you might want to yes. just, t- I'm going to give it to you for free. Okay. All right. But write yourself a movie where you star <laughs> as like a disgraced animal handler <laughs> from, from late night talk shows because, because with like the way that PETA, like they got... You can't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Like we couldn't, you guys, we couldn't even have hermit crabs on Girls 5 Eva for the crab part. They were just all puppets. Really? Because Yeah, oh because of gosh. like, I guess, animal stuff. Were they I being don't know. harmed? Well, no, the puppets were not harmed. It was just someone's finger. But, um, <laughs> but like, I don't know why, but... They literally were like, it was too much of a headache with the, with the <laughs> animal. Ick, we couldn't do it. We just were just going to have oh God. Okay. Pup, crab puppets. So I think you should do, like, you were like the late night correspondent for Fallon, mm-hmm. for the animal person, and then you get, like, disgraced somehow. Maybe you're maybe you killed Marcel the monkey. Uh-huh. I don't know. This is just coming to me right now, guys. Sure, I'm just no, pitching it's all you guys. Good. There are no, no bad, bad ideas. ideas. No bad, no bad ideas. ideas. Um, and then it's like your journey back. This is just, and then that's yeah. just my pitch. 
Okay. I don't great. know. You figure the rest out. I don't I'll, know what else is happening. I can tell <laughs> you. I think I bet it's very easy to become a disgraced animal wrangler. I will I bet. say. I feel like yeah. One yeah, time I'm backstage sure at um, Letterman when Jack Hanna, you know, do you know that? I that do guy? know Jack Hanna, yeah. Um, he, I, I want to say it was like some some like baby tigers, but I found myself in the hallway with like a baby tiger um, cage and Brian Adams. <laughs> and, um, and we wanted to just like scritch it a little bit. And so we opened the cage just oh to scritch God. it. You and, and Brian Adams? Yeah. And then we couldn't get it that we couldn't get the cage door closed. And we were like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. 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 That's a um, great story. Yeah. And we had That's to like truly call, insane. Casey. We had to call for help. That's a great story. Yeah. It well, wasn't gr- well, I don't know. Maybe there. that's the start. Maybe that's the start <laughs> of your movie. Maybe yeah. that's the opening scene. Brian I Adams. Just, guys. I love that. Here we are. I wonder if Brian Adams um, tells that story. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it was embarrassing. Him on the podcast. You, should ask him. <laughs> you should have him on the podcast. Um, I just want to say one thing as yeah. I have to. Well, first of all, you everybody needs to watch Plan B. It's very delightful. Thank you. But then also, guys, I just have to say this. It's, Natalie's not going to preach at you, but I am going to. That if it's um, at all disturbing to you, what's um, that girls are not able to access contraception and that South Dakota is one of 11 sa- states that have trigger bans that if this case that's about to be uh, heard before the Supreme Court ends up dismantling Roe, abortion will be immediately outlawed in those states. And there are 14 other states that have passed pre-viability abortion laws. Not to mention they're just like making it harder and harder access and it only affects, you know, those who really need it, yeah. we need to protect that we should be, you know, the most, most vulnerable among us. So anyway, I just encourage everybody to call their senators because one thing you can do is you can't get on the Supreme Court. I tried. Um, <laughs> they will not, they won't let you on the Supreme Court. They won't even let you in the building, really. Um, but you can call your senator and you can ask them to pass the Women's Health Care Protection Act. It's called WIPA. And as we know from Elizabeth Warren, when she was a guest on our podcast, the things that you ask your senators to do get bumped up in priority the more calls that they get. And so, guys, call that 202 number. You know, that's the, I don't know, the switchboard. There's like a 202 mm-hmm. number. You guys know what it is. Yeah. At home. You can just Google it. Yeah. Ask Google for your senator. Call your senator. Yes. Ask for your senator and just say, hey, you know what? This is really important to me because also I watched those cute girls in Plan B had to drive three and a half hours to even try to get in it. That By the guy. way, there is only one Planned Parenthood in South Dakota. For sure. Because um, the other one got shut down. So, <sighs> yeah. So also donate to Planned Parenthood. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah, it's it's wild. wild. Yeah. And it's wild that like an adult man pharmacist can be, can just stand there and say like, actually, no, I'm not going to give you the contraception that you're asking yeah. for. Which is the craziest thing too. Like people do have misconceptions about plan B, what it is. They do. Yeah. They think it's like the abortion pill. It isn't it, actually. So guys. many people just have FYI. thought that. And, I, and I'm like, part of this movie is about how bad sex education is in this country. And like, I've learned that to be true in promoting this movie that so many people think it's the abortion pill. It's literally a contraceptive. If you took it and you were pregnant, it would do nothing. Right. Um, and you also can't get pregnant the day after you had sex. That's not how biology works. Um, and there's so many misconceptions about what Planned Parenthood is as well. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just a failure of education. I mean, I had no insurance and that's how where I got all my health care when I was young. Yeah. Right. Well, pap smears and yeah. breast exams and screenings and yeah. all kinds of important things. You guys, my, my butt bleeding that we talked about last week, <laughs> I could have gone to an, a Planned Parenthood. They would have seen me. Yes, But I don't true. need to because I don't need to at this point. But, you know. Your butt's also okay? Also, it stopped bleeding, yes. Okay, good. Oh, thank good. God. Um, oh, Thank I you got for bringing number. that up. Busy You're so welcome. <laughs> okay, 202 No, I meant the other stuff, not your butt. Oh, okay. Not your butt. <laughs> oh, okay. 
Yeah. Oh, the other stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So call the United States Capitol. Which word is 202-224-3121. I just don't think that any, I mean, we love like a raunchy road trip, but like also for, for more fun reasons next time. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I want, I want people to watch this movie in five years and be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Why like, would that, that doesn't make sense anymore. This is dated. Yes. That yeah. would be like really nice. Too. I would like that too. Well, I also feel like I'm going to watch it in five years and it's still going to be fucking hilarious because it is. And you did such a wonderful job, Natalie. And I look forward to all the things that you're going to direct in the future and all of the things you're going to write and all of the things that you're going to act in. And then like, I don't even know what the next thing is going to be. Thank you. There's probably, I mean, not even like, like beyond acting and writing and directing. I'm sure there's some other thing. I mean, the animals. Yeah. Maybe. (laughs) Maybe, I'll be but like, maybe. What if I'm some kind of guru in five years? That would be. Fun. We don't know. You yeah. could I'll join. I'll okay. join. A cult? <laughs> I'm in. Great. I'll call you guys first. I'll just like be watching. I'll like look at your Twitter, and you're like, guys, I'm an expert floral designer now. I'm. Uh, I'm. My books are open, uh, and I I'm, have ADD to thank for all of my passions. But same uh, with me. But yeah. uh, you really make it work and look <laughs> very productive. And look great. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Um, well, thanks for taking so much time with us and we love talking to you and I like Same. seeing you and I'm so happy to be on the show I'm such a fan of it so I'm so excited that I got to be on it so thank you for having me Natalie thank you for coming it was nice to see your face yeah and you looking too. great thanks thanks <laughs> well we didn't know it before but we love this one thank yeah. you thank you <laughs> thank you so much Natalie yeah thanks bye guys bye everybody bye bye, bye. Azuna Fresh, Azuna Fresh is keeping that clean air that's essential to our health and well-being clean. Is that good? That was, I mean, it was, it It had a lot of information in it. Mm -hmm. Guys, we know that. We know that you want clean air. We know that it's essential to health and well-being, but what are you doing to make sure that the air in your home is clean for you and your family? Well, I started using Azuna Fresh and I am obsessed. Their odor eliminators not only eliminate bad smells, they also naturally get rid of mold, mildew, and fungus and bacteria in the air. And you know what? I just realized I need to remind myself, I need to put one in the laundry room downstairs because I had one. I don't know where it went. And I felt like it smelled a little mildewy in there. And I'm going to put one back in there. Yeah. I have one next to my hamper and it works really like you can't even tell that there's laundry there anymore. Yeah. Dream come true. So bathrooms, um, I put one in my pullout trash drawer uh, under a sink. It's antimicrobial plant-based it's kind of like a goo and it actually cleans and neutralizes fungus and bacteria in the air, which means healthier immune systems and fewer allergies, which is something, you know, I suffer from. Plus Azuna Fresh eliminates odor from the source and there's no weird chemical smell or toxins. It's so much better for your home and your family than air fresheners that are just like masking a smell and they have artificial scents and they always give me a headache. Yeah. Um, And, because it's like just a little jar that has, you know, you peel the top off and it has holes in the top. You just set the jar where you need it and then you don't have to think about it. it. They last 60 to 90 days. There's no electricity needed. You don't plug anything in. Um, they also have their spray for spot treatment for sneakers or clothes or your car, um, anywhere that could use a little quick refresh. And I'm going to actually hit my gym sneakers with it later today, too. Yeah, this, I doing this ad now has reminded me. <laughs> yeah, I use it for like the dog beds, carpet, guest bed. That's nice. Yeah. That's a good idea. Listen, trust me, you need a Zuna Fresh in your home. Right now, I've got a special offer for all of our listeners, 20% off your purchase. Go to azunafresh.com today and use the code BEST for 20% off your new favorite odor eliminator. Uh, That's promo code B-E-S-T at A-Z-U-N-A fresh.com. You guys, trust me, you're going to love it. Guys, guys, first of all, I just remembered my dream just now. 
And I know no one finds anyone's dreams interesting, except that Kanye West and Kim Kardashian were in my dreams. <laughs> Dream last night. And that in and of itself is fucking wild because I never have, I have, I have, you're really learning a lot about me. Too. I love it. I have the distinction of having the most obvious dreams <laughs> of all time. Like I will dream exactly what is happening in my life in dream form. And then I'll wake up and I'll be like, Ugh, I had this dream that, you know, I moved to Ohio and I felt very out of place and I didn't have the thing. And then I'm like, oh, right. Cause I moved, to, I'm feeling out of place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So stupid. Like there's just no, they're so basic. Like my brain doesn't do anything creative with them. But last night, guys, I don't know why, but Kim and Kanye were there. And now I see today is Kanye's birthday. Mm. So there's, so maybe I knew that. And is Kanye also, your prince? <laughs> Maybe. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> wait, I was I was really thinking about it. I'm like, wait, what? What is he my prince? Like prince? Like prince? <laughs> no, or like prince. She's Harry. always going to remember Prince's birthday. And <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Okay, Prince the Prince, not Prince Prince Harry. Wait, you guys. Yeah. I just went. I went to People Mag because I was looking for a thing and. And I saw that, that it's Kanye's birthday. And he, and then I remembered that he was in my dream last night. And that was fucking wild. But I also think the reason why is because yesterday I became obsessed with these dresses that are fully like a dress that Kim Kardashian would have worn or maybe has worn or has was inspired by Kim Kardashian because I'm trying to figure out what to wear in New York because I'm pouring sweat literally all the time. Mm. And so I need something that doesn't show the sweat, mm. but that I can sweat in, but that also is so, is cool enough that I'm not going to feel oppressed by the fabric. Like Basically, a white linen? No, white linen, I think you're going to see the sweat. Okay. You're going to see the sweat on a white linen on me. Okay. And so... I don't know. I had found these dresses yesterday and I was looking at them. I'm like, I really like these. And then I was like, this is so a dress that like Kim Kardashian would have posted like three years ago. And I would have been like, Ugh, who could ever wear that? And now everybody is like making it and wearing it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You yeah. know how she's like influenced yeah. Yeah, things. Yeah. Right. Sure. So I think that's why she was in my dream. I don't know what the fuck Kanye was doing there. <laughs> Other than maybe I'm concerned about them. Also, I sent you that thing about Chloe, the ad, because I'm and she's upset about people Whew. talking about her plastic surgery. And then and I hate that, too, because I hate that it's like, again, like people get so fucking invested in other people's yeah. appearances. But I do feel like what happened to her was that people were so fucking invested in her appearance that it really deeply affected her sense of self and self worth. And listen, I just want everyone to be happy with the way that they look. Yeah, um, right. Okay, and then my, you know, Harry and Meghan had their baby. We didn't talk about oh, that. Yeah. I had a little baby girl. And they named her Lilibet. Lilibet. Which is, but you you say it Lilibet. No, Lilibet. That's how. Well, I, they're calling her Lily. Right, right. But the queen's nickname, I think, was Lilibet. No, I know, but I read an oh. article that said it's pronounced Lilibet. Well, because oh, they want to call her that. Lily. Yeah. But I don't think that, but I thought that the queen, her nickname is, was Lilibet. I thought Lilibet. it was, it wasn't oh, Lilibet. I was saying it Lilibet. I was as well, but I read an article that said it's pronounced But can I just Lilibet. ask a question? Definitely their child is named, is pronounced that way. But are, do we know that that's what the queen's nickname was pronounced as? I don't, oh, no. I mean, I don't know. I'll look it up. I also read an article where somebody was like, I think it's an insult that they named their child this because that was a private nickname. And I was like, oh my Lord, can we just. Yeah. Everyone calm down. Yeah. I mean, is everything's not a, maybe it is. I don't know. How uh, do you pronounce Lily Bat? Um, Prince Harry, gorgeous deeper meaning she is more than blah 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 so how do you pronounce lilibet is pronounced lilibet 
You can hear the proper pronunciation in the U- YouTube video below. Well, Lily bad. <laughs> Those pronunciation videos sound so psychotic. <laughs> I don't know. That's all I got to tell you. Lily bad. Well, it now is. I'm on. Now I'm on a. Now I'm on a. Now I'm in a. In a hole. In a, in a in a hole. Now I'm in a hole. And uh, listen, I'll tell you what. I'm scared to ask the queen because if it's like a private nickname, I don't want to get on her bad side. No, it's apparently not like it was well known that his the king, the king, the king, the fucking king called her that publicly, guys. And then and then like Philip called her that. Right. Yes. So it's fine. We can we can know that it's her nickname. And like, I think I think. Harry's her favorite, right? Don't you get that vibe? That Prince Harry's oh, her favorite. She yeah. loves him. Yeah. But always, always the squeaky wheel is the grandma's yeah. favorite. Always. Yeah. Always the one that's like defying convention. Yeah. In any yeah. family. Your grandma loves that one the best. Yeah. Just let's be yeah. real. Yeah. They like Actually, the squeaky one the best. I feel like I'm the brown sheep, but I will say my grandmother is obsessed with my sister. Like actively, oh, really? <laughs> actively lets everyone know that my sister is the number one. My sister also got like all the good hair. She like did all like the things you're supposed to do as a good Indian daughter. And so my grandmother is like obsessed with her. <laughs> I think she sometimes has a soft spot for me, but all honestly, sometimes she's like, eh, I could take it or leave it. <laughs> well, <laughs> my, is, is your grandmother, your grandmother is still with us. She is still with us. Yes. That's love. That's lucky yes. and lovely. Yes. Um, well, my grandmother recently made herself known, um, her ghost self known to a medium that was doing a reading for our friend Shantira. I know Shantira. You know Shantira. Because I used to so, live in Chicago as well. Oh, you did? Did you do Second City? I did. Yeah. I love Shantira. She's Shantira amazing. is like, um, she's like the de facto mayor of Chicago. I feel like she, if yeah. you're from Chicago, you know Shantira. Yes. She's so sweet. I love her. We, um, she's amazing, but she had a session with a medium. My grandma showed up. Stop. And was like hanging. Yes. We talked about this last week on the podcast. We made an appointment with the medium and Casey and I spoke with her on Sunday, two days ago. It was fucking wild. (laughs) Like truly, truly fucking nuts. And so that's what we were discussing. You guys at home, we were just trying to explain to Ponam that we, well, I'm just trying to explain to her right now. Before we came back, I was like, do we, should we do, should we talk about that now? Should we wait? And Casey's like, I think it's too much to just do now. No, it can't be rushed. I think, no, I think we do a special, a very special episode. All right. That's what I think. So I think we're going to do that, guys. We'll slap yeah. it together. I'd love to tune we'll in. Use some of her audio uh, because she graciously allowed us to record her, even wow. though she said it was like pulling her out of her comfort zone. Well, not the recording her. She's like, oftentimes people want to record the session, but that we were using Casey's Zoom link and not her own. I don't know why, but that was like, she was like, that's out of my comfort zone. But she was incredible. And then like kept receiving messages for us. So she was like messaging us. Yeah. And for like like, other people. And like in the morning was like texting me like with other messages that were coming through and, uh, and then even had a message for my friend Frank, which was what? And I texted Frank. I texted Tina the message that she had for her. And Tina was like, huh, I'll ponder that. Which I told Tina that I would, that I identified with because I feel like everything the medium said for me, I was sort of like, I had to think about it for a minute. Like I was like, oh, okay, okay. But I feel like it's like a pop quiz and I didn't immediately like put two and two together. And then five minutes later, I was like, after we hung up, I was like, oh, oh. There were there were two things. One thing that like I didn't put together until later. In, I mean, we did, we get to it in our discussion, but like the two words that she started with that my grandma was saying 
that I was like, what the fuck does that mean? I don't know what that means. And when I figured it out and it made me laugh so hard and then I called Barb Phillips, my mother, my mother guys at home, you know, <laughs> I called Barb this morning because she's been like waiting to hear. And Casey, I need to talk to you about that offline because it was like super fucking intense. <laughs> wow. Um, and I told my mom and my mom could not stop laughing. She was like, that is so moot. Oh my God fucking god like she was just dying uh it was the pickles and feathers thing oh yeah 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 okay so i guys, cannot wait to hear this episode because i'm this like is a, what it's a it's a real fucking tease it's a real tease a you're not gonna tease. get it right now but we need to we need to be able to edit in some of her talking to us and saying the things so we have to casey and i have to figure out how we're gonna do that yeah uh and we'll do it I, we'll do it in the next like week or two yeah and it'll just, we'll just, when we throw it up, we'll just post about we'll it. Just on figure Instagram. it out. I yeah. don't know. Um, I'm presenting at the CMT Awards. Oh, that's tonight. exciting. Oh. Remotely from a studio. What category? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a category. I just oh. introduced like Miranda Lambert's new side oh. gig with those two guys. And then they do a performance. But I got like my super long nails put back on for it for my look. They look, I was noticing them earlier. They look good. I mean, they're, look at the they're bling beautiful. on beautiful. I know they're beautiful. But I, I can't put any necklaces on anymore <laughs> again. And like I did poke Gina, our dog, in the eye, Aww. which I felt bad about. Oh, and you guys, Gina's currently getting plastic surgery. Aww. Not really. She's getting her warts removed from her Aww. mouth. Aww. She got... She got, she got DPV, doggy papillomavirus. Well, it's like HPV, but it's for dogs. And, um, and you know, a lot of people say you don't, you don't get them removed. They'll just go away. And when she first got them, they were really little. And the vet tech was like, we brought her in. And they're like, yeah, no, she doesn't. It's fine. She'll be fine. We'll give her some antibiotics. It'll probably just go away. Well, not, it's been two months. Not only did they not go away, you guys, they got gigantic and insane. Aww. And so we fi- so we agree so we like finally were like, okay, we gotta take this this lady back and get her get her all straightened out. And when I dropped her off this morning, the vet tech came out to get her because they're still doing like social distancing, you know, like not letting people in. So they come out to you. And the vet tech was like, Oh my God, oh, no. that's crazy. When did they get that big? And I was like, I know that's Aww. what I was, that's why I have been, I keep calling. And she's like, whoa, yeah, no, these gotta go. I was like, okay. Great. Did they freeze them off? Isn't that what you do with the I warts? don't know exactly. freeze them I, off? Yeah, I think so. I think they just do, I think it's like literally like what they do for human warts. Yeah. yeah. So I think they freeze them or I don't know, but uh, I knew a girl in high school that had like one wart on her leg and then she shaved and shaved over the wart and it spread all over her legs. I mean, she had like 10 (sighs) warts on her legs and then she had to get them frozen off. No, she seems to be doing fine now, but (laughs) my kids have had my kids have had warts. I I had a wart. That's so funny that you say that I had a wart on my knee when I was little when I was a kid and I remember picking it off and it was fine. I didn't get them all over myself after that, but Busy MD. Warts are, I don't know. <laughs> warts are like a virus, right? So they can. It's spread. a virus. Yeah, it's a virus. Yeah, I don't know, guys. You need to I put a little mask Gina. over your wart. Poor Gina. I know. Aww, oh, but you know what? Cricket had gotten one like on her elbow. I think she had one. Yeah, and someone. I don't know, guys. I'm not a doctor, so don't take my word for it. But somebody told me that if you just put one of those like pimple patches over it, it goes away. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Like you basically, like I guess you basically just want to like suffocate them. Yeah, I heard duct tape (sighs) works as well. That's okay. I'm not putting duct tape on my child, Casey. But thank you. Just saying, some people don't have pimple patches. Well, you think you buy one at Walgreens? I don't know. They're not that expensive. You know what I mean? Would they stick as well as duct tape? Honestly. But duct tape is probably more expensive than pimple patches. But you really? might just have duct tape. Like maybe your dad just has yeah. duct tape. All right. Okay, fine. I don't know. Guys, use duct tape. Um, Casey's, because <laughs> as my mother would tell you, Casey, Casey's yeah. got a, an edge. She's got a leg up. Um, well, this has been delightful. This was I so hope you fun. guys had a nice time. Thank you for listening to me cry. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad we could be here for that. Tell. 
I'm going to do better. Well, listen, I mean, New York City, it's a weird, it's like another planet, you know? It's just hard to navigate a new place and to know what you're supposed to do. And it just operates differently than any other place, you know? Yeah. And you're you're crying now, but you'll look back on it and laugh. I mean, I kind of was like laughing. Yeah, in the moment, yeah. You know, yeah. but then I got then I got sad, as is sometimes the case. Oh yeah. Sometimes you laugh until you're like, "This is deeply and sad." And also, you can feel both um, at the same time. Sometimes you're like, "Ha ha." ha you know ha, what? <laughs> we have to be able to hold space for both all things. Yeah. yeah, we have to hold space for all things. Yes. Um, Panam, what a joy to meet you Me and too. have you as our little joiner guest host today. So this happy to so meet fun. you. So fun. So nice meeting you, ladies. Yeah, you're a delight. You're wonderful on special. Guys, if you haven't watched it again, not again, but if you haven't watched it, we're, watch it. We're beseeching we're you again. We're telling you again. To watch we're telling it. you again to watch it. Panam is so funny. Um, just really, really, really talented actor and thank you. Multi talented, I'm sure, but just really, really especially funny especially this season. So good. Um, And guys, please subscribe and download and share our podcast so that we can keep doing it. And um, email us with any thoughts or feelings or concerns, (laughs) um, questions and or uh, pool recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Pool pool recs. Um, I am going to say this because I just feel like I need to. I will not hire a babysitter off of um, somebody sure. reaching That's out to fair. us. That's fair. But That's I, fair. Uh, <laughs> the email is busydoinghebest at gmail.com. We check it. Sometimes we just respond to people because for fun. That's true. <laughs> Sometimes and like I said, you know what? If you prove via that email, I'm, I'm going to send you something. I'm serious. <laughs> I really will do it. So we'll have to comb through it. If you prove to me that you've called your senators or Congress people every day and talked to them about how important the Women's Health Care Protection Act is, I will send you something. So email us that. Email us your proof. Screenshot your okay. call logs. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I want to see it. I want to see the 202. And then I also want to see the uh, the number of minutes that mm, went into mm-hmm. that 202 number. I don't want to see, I don't want to see a minute. I know that how long that switchboard even takes. All right. Follow our Instagram at BP is doing her best. Casey is the one that posts on there. So <laughs> which Spoiler I do, alert. I do my best to post on you there. You really do. Per usual, guys, we love you. We love and you thank so you much. for listening. And that's it. That's it. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, no.